today in the podcast, uh, we actually talk a lot about um, the 30 days of coaching. And you know, if you're just coming over to our podcast or just started listening to us in the first uh, maybe month or two, and there's over 500 episodes, that could be pretty overwhelming for somebody that wants uh, all the good information there. So what we have done here is we have taken all the really solid information about nutrition and working out and uh, muscle imbalances and gut microbiome. I mean, you name it, we get all the stuff that we would put together if we were coaching someone day by day. Mm. And we, we, it's the 30 days of coaching and my pump gave to me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Every fucking thing you need. <laughs> and <laughs> what, what Doug has done is he's actually time stamped uh, where we talk about that topic. So each day there's a new topic. And the topic is time stamped in all the podcast episodes where we talk in depth about that. Plus, it includes any studies to back up any of the information that we talk about during these podcasts. It's if you're if you you know if you're embarking on a fitness journey or if you're listening to our podcast, it's free. If you're it's an no embarker. Brainer. Well, if you look, you know you are. A lot of people will listen to our podcast, and we get messages all the time, and they're like, "Oh my god, you guys are saying a lot of stuff that's counter to what I thought was true in fitness." For example. You know, you don't need to eat small meals throughout the day to burn uh, more fat or, um, you know, just all the myths and baloney that's out there. Um, we talk about that in detail in the 30 Days of Coaching. We provide you with great information and we provide you with links to studies where if you're a, if you're a science minded individual, you can actually click on those links and read the study yourself so you can see kind of how it's, you know, how they came to the, how we come to our conclusions. And it's free and it's going to keep getting better. Um, it's, it's so all you gotta do is go to mindpumpmedia.com. You opt in and you'll get it all. I think the first day now, right? We don't even wait. You don't have to get it every single day for 30 days. Now you get it all right away. Right away. So, you can kinda, so there you go. Mindpumpmedia.com, 30 days of coaching. We love you. It's everything you need right there. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah. Do you remember the, the oh, song? Yeah. You do? DuckTales. Woo. <laughs> I don't know the words, but. DuckTales. Woo. You know why that was one of the most misleading cartoons of all fucking time? The danger goes behind you. And there's a stranger out to find you. What to do? Just grab on to them DuckTales. Wow, you do remember. He knows the whole song. Yeah, I knew that part. You know, it was, of all the cartoons I can think about, one of the most just horrible, misinforming cartoons I can think of. If you had. A vault full with of a gold coins, pile of gold coins, <laughs> and you jumped off you would a diving board yourself, head first into it. Yeah, you would die. You not would, if you're done. You would, well, not you, if you're done. You would, okay, you would let's get a bunch of face. gold coins and we'll yeah, throw a crack your skull. We'll throw a duck at them yeah. <laughs> and see how the duck does. I'm jumping into the paper money. Yeah, you know I would do that. Even that, even if it was a huge vault of just stacked paper it, it would money, be, it'd be tempting for you not to do it though. to dive in it. Oh yeah. Just, a paper oh, just no, like, if it was open, it would be fine. How much was, would that hurt? If it was, if it was stacked like hundred or like ten thousand dollars stacks, that they come in the yeah, bank, you'd break that, your face. Yeah, that wouldn't work. But if it was open, yeah, you'd, you'd have to fluff it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you could yeah, do yeah. it. You could do like it like a pillow. You could no, do it. It'd be it, like leaves, leaf piles. Yeah, it would be yeah, like a leaf. You could like do like it. Run and jump in it. You'd you have to like loosely like stack them in there. Well, but coins, you'd break your face. Maybe we'll be so rich we can do that. Yeah, you know that's why they never got. That's why they never got sued. Oh. Because if if it was something that kids actually had and tried, they would have got sued by now. But because <laughs> kids don't have a vault think, of gold coins, yeah. Because don't tell me there was Richie Rich. He did the same shit. Did he dive in the in the gold coins? I'm pretty sure he surfed it or Maybe, something. Be honest now. Be honest. Yeah. Let's say you were a kid watching that and you saw Scrooge McDuck diving in the coins, and you just so happen to have a a vault of gold coins. Right. Tell me honestly, would you not have? Jumped into the gold coins would, and broke your teeth. Well, I would have cannonballed first. Yeah, you would have broke your ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You would have broke your oh, tailbone. Yeah. I'd have been smart enough not to dive head. I've first. been shitting yeah. gold coins for the last two weeks. Oh my goodness! Hey, what a great, mm. what a great uh, podcast! Oh my I, goodness! I have to say, I was a little nervous. I actually, really, really like the girls. I do. From the Girls Gone Wild podcast, I yeah, did. I did. I had a, they're good people. I did. I had a good time. So. 
um, they contacted us a long time ago. Actually, Joy uh, was listening to Mind Pump during the early days. And, she lived up to her name. Yeah, and she um, she contacted us a long time ago and told us she liked our our show. And then a little later, she told us uh, that we were getting a little too negative on the show, mm. and she'd give us feedback. And I really enjoyed her feedback because I respected the way she delivered it. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're both very, very smart girls. Um, their podcast has got women. Uh, their pot women. Sorry, yeah. I know lionesses. Sound, I know you got you got to be goddesses. It. Sorry, <laughs> their um, their podcast has got such a a good feel. Like you feel like you're listening to. Like you're sitting in with your friends, you know they're, what I mean? They're kind of like the female version of us. Yeah, way. They just need one more, you know, badass lady. Way less offensive, but yeah, they're totally uh, the really, really good information. Very entertaining to listen to. Um, they're both have the roots in CrossFit, um, but they're very much focused on overall health and wellness in all aspects. Um, and they talk about their personal life stories and stuff. And so we had this podcast with them where they actually came down to Mind Pump Media headquarters. And we all sat around and had just great conversation. And it got kind of deep. At one point, I think we asked Joy to, to like break you down, Adam. Remember yeah. that? Oh, yeah. She dove. What a crazy story, too. <laughs> she dove into me. Yeah. And those it wasn't don't, awkward at all. Those that don't know, <laughs> yeah, I, know. I have. Yeah, it was, I, to watch you guys uh, squirm over it was pretty crazy. Uh, I ha- Just so happened. This has never happened. It's crazy, right? She decides to dive into my childhood stuff. And those that have been listening to podcasts for a long time know that I've my real dad committed suicide. My mom then uh, married into an abusive relationship. Oh, well, no. check this out. My stepfather. This is, oh, where, this is where it gets awkward. This was so uh, oh my my God, st- uncomfortable. My yeah. stepfather, who happens to be the one a part of that abusive relationship, just so happened to drop by Mind Pump Media for his first ever right. live show that he's ever watched. He first li- time no, ever. Like he was literally, let me explain. Sitting let me a paint couple a picture. arm lengths for me. He was sitting watching us meanwhile she has no idea who he is yeah right? she didn't she know, know he was she didn't know he was he so she's was my dad. and she's a fan of the show, show so she's like well you know adam i know you had a tough yeah. childhood and you know your mom was in an abusive relationship and this and that and i'm like <gasps> yeah. oh fuck he's right yeah. there and he I mean he was i mean i've only met him a couple of times he seems like a great guy and yeah, you totally. guys seem to have uh you know better relate i don't know but anyway it was very very yeah, so those those here. that are listening to this yeah. episode, just imagine yeah. that, and imagine all just of us shade sitting in the room at that here. time, and how crazy that is that she had no idea who he was, and the fact that he's never, ever listened, not one episode out of 500 episodes, he just so happened to be here, I invited him to drop in, the universe, and, man. and then that came out, so I thought that was pretty wild. We talked a lot about topics that um, they were very interested in, you know, things that we've talked about in the past, but we went into real depth, like relationships relationships with food, mm-hmm. exercise, how we treat our bodies. Oh, we come right out the gates on CrossFit right away. We yeah. talk about CrossFit. We, 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 we call the elephant in the room. One. Elephant in the room right, right out the, the gates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I mean, we have a lot of respect for these two girls. Love yeah. them. Uh, definitely we'll be doing another podcast with them at some point in the future. So yep. uh, you can find their website is Girls Gone Wad, W-O-D, podcast. Oh, and they brought a lawyer com. in here. Oh, that was way. great. Yeah, that, was, that was cool. Um, yeah. She was actually very yeah, nice. Surprise, we have our yeah. lawyer with us. I'm like, yeah. why? We don't, have a bad re- we don't have a bad reputation. What? We're not doing anything crazy. Yeah. yeah. What are you talking about? Here, have a beer. Justin oh. had to like Want put his drugs. Justin yeah. had to put on his pants real quick. I was like, oh, man. Um, their Instagram is at Girls Gone Wad Podcast. And that's the name of their podcast, Girls Gone Wad Podcast. So uh, do us a favor and check them out. Give them a nice little download boost. Yeah. Because um, uh, they deserve it. They've been around for a little while. Um, so without any further ado, here we are talking to Joy and Claire from the Girls Gone Wad podcast. In my head, I have conversations with you guys, but no, <laughs> I, I just feel like the the there's so much that you have opened my eyes to, and of course, I I love CrossFit. And there's a lot that is done for me, but I think if if there's something that I really want to continue to learn is what you guys have taught me is just there's there's so much more to fitness, and there's so much more to like taking care of your body yeah. in so many different ways. And mm-hmm. so I feel like that if, if we were to, you know, create something, I think that's kind of what I want to do is like, Oh, like right now I'm kind of like this. And it's just like, what have I done to my body? I'm interested to know like what I've done to my body. I'm 39 years old. And I know there's things that like, I don't want to screw myself by like continuing to do the same thing over and over again and compound injuries and what have you. But um, I think that's the, 
that's I don't know. It's just all. I mean, I I love hearing your guys' perspective because mm-hmm. I know we when we first came out and we first opened up, we we targeted CrossFit. Um, not because any of us didn't like CrossFit and we, no. but we knew that I was doing it. Actually. Yeah. We had yeah. all done it. I mean, we'd all, but we also saw the, the big flaws and so did people like Kelly Starr, And that's why, and even Rob, Wolf, like these guys built their businesses off the same thing. I remember when we first were going to go see those guys, Mike Bledsoe, yeah. uh, Rob Wolf uh, in our heads, there was a part of us that were like nervous. Like yeah, we're not going like, to like, it's going to be a little friction. Yeah. Right? When was this? What year was this? It's the last, we just, oh, just months recently. Ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, we hung out, we, 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 we did Rob Wolf already yeah. we, and, and we then, haven't got Kelly Starrett yet. That'll be a good one. Yeah, I, I look forward to the day we get to meet. But I, it's I can I probably already tell you from all the stuff I've watched on Kelly, and I, he'll probably be just like Rob, just like Mike. Which they're not dogmatic about it. No, they're, no. and they actually see all the shit that's wrong with it, and they're they're trying to be they're a solution. Trying to help and yeah, it, I don't know. That's what I respected the most, especially like Mike Bledsoe's, like how he was coming into the the community and and he wanted to come in and influence instead of you know be outside and just talk about the flaws all the time and you know that that was like impactful even for me because you know like that's something obviously because justin definitely i've hammered it, the it most, probably sure. the most i've hammered yeah. it because it you know why is it because like that that's my mentality mm-hmm. and so i see myself in every crossfitter almost you know and, and what that, do you mean that's your mentality? My mentality is I want to kill and I want to murder and I want to fucking do this workout, you <laughs> know, and beat everybody feed, by all means necessary. Yeah, yeah feeding the competitive the athlete, side. Yeah. yeah. You know, that that's just the mentality that, uh, it, you know, it fosters at a really, you know, high level. Like I was, when even when I was working out in it with my friend, I wanted to, my friend was just getting back into fitness and I, I really wanted to go in there and support him in that in that process and so i you know i had all these reserves about crossfit and i went in and did it with him and we went through these wads together and i actually lasted probably about two or three months and uh you you know even for him he he got swept into a lot of the competitive part of it because we both played together and um, you and he, I were working together. He injured at that time. his shoulder That's ten plus yeah. years ago. I mean, that was. Uh, are you, guys, you guys are talking about what the what's what's wrong and what's right? No, not the no, what's, no, 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 not at all. We were. Just, I'm just my experience and like why I I don't know. I guess why I'm I'm trying to explain why I've probably been the most vocally um, aggressive aggressive yeah. towards it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just and I, I recognize that being fully immersed in it versus you know, like you have to kind of have that experience of fully drinking the Kool-Aid and like yeah. every single day you wake up and all you hear about is going in and winning the warm up and being at the top of the whiteboard. And yep. that, but like you can't, that's not a long-term strategy for 99.9% of exactly. the population. Yeah. And that, you know, I if think it was called sport. Uh, yeah. They just yeah. put a goddamn sport after it. Yeah. Like, that's why? what I'm passionate about that. Why yeah. though? Because, so, because it's, uh, I love how we it, just jumped into this uh, <laughs> because hey. it, we can't help it hey. yeah. because yeah. it takes, okay. So it's different. So if I'm, uh, if someone, Someone wants to get in better shape and they go play basketball to get in better shape. Yeah. It's different than come do this workout, this basketball workout for everybody. So it's it's a different attitude and it's treated differently. So if it's a sport, people respect it differently. They train differently. They understand that it's not that it's a sport first, get in shape second versus get in shape first. Sports second, and I'll tell you. And I'll well, I'll, any I'll, athlete that's older than forty plus years will tell you how many imbalances and how fucked they up they are from playing their sport for yeah. twenty plus years. Yes. It, it's no. That's kind of what I'm waiting for. Well, yeah. well, well here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like uh, um, CrossFit, impl- it uses lots and lots of different exercises and movements. So it's not necessarily that it's one dimensional in the movements because you do a lot of yeah. pulling, pushing, and a lot of great oh, exercises. I mean, if you were going to pick one sport that you yeah. should play for the rest of your life to try and stay in the best shape, it probably would mark up there as one of the greatest, but it still is. It's still yeah. not optimal. I think that's the, just it. And the, the really the, 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 the problem begins and ends with uh, the way that the workouts are programmed. That's really it. It's not the exercises because the exercises are excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, the intensity you can leave that up to the you know individual coaches and 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 pe- people doing it because I've been to facilities where the coaches really monitored intensity. Oh, well. I have guys that work for me that are brilliant CrossFit coaches, and they're but they're the one percent, you know, and and it, and really you, they're spending the most of their time having to like talk people out of the sport mentality of it. And it's just like, well, it'd be just solved if we called it CrossFit sport. And then there was these gym boxes where there's, you know, these control programming, because those are the only ones I see that are doing it well. And I feel like the Mike Bledsoe's and the Rob Wolves, these guys are trying to help that movement, but it's, 
it's growing so fast it can't keep up. Well, I think the he, 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 one of the issues <laughs> Mom, maybe let them talk. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Oh, oh yeah, welcome. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we're not on Mind Pub, you yeah, asshole. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, this is what we do. <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> we're trying like, to stop this. Be from a happening. fucking good guest, yeah. Jesus All right, Christ! Sorry, you shut up. <laughs> I was gonna say I think that that's like been the issue with how fast CrossFit has grown is because when it first started, anyone really could have gone to the CrossFit Games, and just in the last three or four years, it's gotten to the point where it's like you have just as much likelihood of going to the games as you do being a you know a high school football player who's going to go to the NFL mm. but six or seven years ago you could have just started CrossFit yeah, in your garage and then gone to the games mm. and it's that mentality has not caught up mm. with yeah. the reality the people so that are people, doing it haven't right, realized they still you think, can't go to the games they still and think so like I could just walk in and next year be on the podium at the CrossFit Games. And so they look at the people who do that. They look at the Katrin Davis daughters of the world and say, like, well, I should train like her because I'm just like her. You know, we're just regular gals going to the gym. And it's like, no, no, she's a genetic freak and has Mm. been, you know, she's 23. Yeah. Like, okay. She just is exuding human growth hormone as she works out. (laughs) But, you know, so like I'm with no athletic background, I'm not going to be able to walk into the gym and even in five or 10 years be at the CrossFit Mm. Games. Like I'm just not, that's not going to happen for me. Well, it looks like it's shifting because again, like they're using uh, or working with people like Kelly Starrett, who is a mobility uh, god. I mean, we respect the heck out of him. And I think you're going to start to see changes in programming. Like one of the biggest issues that we've had with programming was inserting Olympic lifts into fatigue-based programming, which... Olympic lifts, and you guys know you do them, right? Extremely technical. Of all the lifts you could do with a barbell, nothing comes close to the technicality of an Olympic lift at all. I mean, a squat and a deadlift are very difficult to teach. Uh, You can multiply that times a thousand for an Olympic lift. And when you insert it into fatigue-based programming where you're doing it for reps to where you get fatigued, the first thing that happens when you do any exercise to fatigue is your form starts to break down, which is okay with some exercises. Yeah, but we, we all of us in this room have spent 15 to 20 years trying to teach. I, I, I have clients that I've had for 10 years still trying to perfect the deadlift. Like I'm, I, I have to put that much work into all their imbalances just to get them to mechanically move correctly. And that takes years, years with me standing there and helping them. Like, and so to have these people that are that are fl- flooding into these boxes and they all they really want to do is just look like a crossfitter or get in shape like that and they've heard all these great things they there's so many pe- it's to me it has to change at one point and i think it's a simple fix i think it's like put a fucking sport at the end of crossfit so we know that hey it's a fucking it is a badass sport i love it i think it's awesome and then i then we just have another side which is training programs and i think someone like like a kelly starrett or a rob wolf who have a lot of influence in that community already and they're very well respected i think these are the guys that may may create it or i would love to be a part of that where you have people that love those type of movements and you set it up in a in a a different man it cannot be the way it is right now for the general population hmm. to and, get in shape and be healthy and to be to be fair uh, and we've talked about this before what CrossFit has done right um, is pretty, oh they've done a lot pretty, of shit right is pretty a lot remarkable. of shit a lot of good shit. I mean, we worked in gyms. I've been in working professionally in a gym uh, now for twenty years, right? And it wasn't that long ago. No joke. Like I mean, you guys are both fit and you've been working out for a long time. It wasn't that long ago that the squat rack had dust on it. Like mm. nobody did a squat. So true. Yeah. W- women did not touch barbell and never did a deadlift. Oh gosh, yeah, yeah. and. CrossFit comes along yep. and single-handedly, because bodybuilding wasn't doing it, no one else was doing it, single-handedly got people to look at these very effective lifts yeah. and better than any, I, like again, I've been in the commercial fitness industry who has been advertising to women for a long time because they recognized early on that uh, that's that's those are your main consumers. That's going to be your best consumer. Most marketers have noticed this and they've marketed to women over and over again. CrossFit, actually better than anybody has sold resistance training to women. Yeah. They've made it like lift weights, build muscle. You'll look great. And it's awesome. Which is an amazing message that we, we should have been giving to people. It was, it was so a long con- time ago. It was and so they condescending the way the fitness Not only is- that I want to give them like huge credit for taking people from just showing up at a gym and, and going through a workout to actually building a community and people that care that you're inside the gym and they're all supportive and, like you didn't see that for a long time. Like people, it was just like, 
everybody went into the gym and that was their thing. Yeah, it like was I separate. grew up going to 24 hour fitness and working out in the gym and going and teaching classes even and just people go in, you don't really know their names and then they leave and you're like, okay, bye, see you tomorrow. And no one really, in a way, CrossFit for us, at least classes, uh, CrossFit classes keep us accountable because we'll go in and you have the same group where you're, you're working out with every morning and then you leave or if you're not there two days a week, everyone's like, where were you? And you so you feel that sense of community. But like, it's really weird for me now to go into like an orange theory class or I haven't been to 24 hour fitness in forever, but like no one talks to each other. And I'm yeah. Like, this is so weird now because you go in and you have that community, which I agree with you is a huge plus. Um, but yeah, I, I think I mean, in the bit in the business of fitness, if you can tap into that, you're going to be very successful. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember curves. You guys remember curves? Oh yeah. Okay. Curves tapped into that. And Curves, yeah. I remember because we were in upper management for 24 Hour Fitness. So we were in the fastest growing fitness organization in the world, right? So we're in the middle of that whole tornado of like what's working and what's not working. Here we are in meeting after meeting discussing how we can penetrate this particular part of the market, which won't even walk into our gyms. They won't even go in. And so we try everything. We you try. You guys were waiting for a sexual they, joke. I was waiting. See, <laughs> I, I saw your so face. So disappointed. You know, I looked at you. I know. I know. Yeah. So we, <laughs> Maybe we, later. We were trying I'm so hard to get into that market. And here comes Curves. And really what they did is they just kind of created this environment. And it was a, it was a crappy, I mean, workout. It was good oh, it was, for starters. It was not even but good they, for starters. It was a horror. It was, <laughs> but it blew it was up. The, that was yeah. the, come on, bro. That was the, uh, that was the epitome of the worst programming yeah. ever that had been delivered to millions of people. But they that exploded. Was like, yeah. They went from zero yeah. to like Let's all sit machines oh. in a circle and then do it again. Yeah. Pneumatic equipment. Yeah. And, and, and this is why, too, n- never, ever, ever, ever will group training be ideal for an individual. And that's the bottom line. You just can't. And and one of the greatest challenges that we have right now, and that's why what we're doing is not even close to being done, is okay. We we build this podcast, and we're, first of all, we all talk all the bull, all how much bullshit's in the supplement industry. So no supplements. Are Which, gonna fu- by the way, I love when you guys talk about that because it's <laughs> also like you've saved me so much money, and I love that. <laughs> Recently, you just did an episode where you talked about like you're like just go buy some caffeine or creatine and then like make your own. I was like, oh my gosh, this is brilliant. <laughs> anyway, yeah, go ahead. So and that's what. I, so we we can't get any money there. And anybody who's been in fitness long enough knows that the the best way to make money in this industry is through supplements. You need something or some sort of an EFT model where you have a membership fee every month. So one of the hardest things for us was, okay, how do we create programs? Because we're selling to the masses. That's individualized if that's a big part of our message. So that is the the hardest thing about what we do right now. But that's why what's so special about what we do with MAPS is that we encourage people to actually modify and we provide the tools to do that virtually. And that's why we're not there yet, right? We're close. We still have another program that's coming out to get really detailed. So that way, somebody who starts our program could be going along and they feel an ache or they notice this or they, and it doesn't feel right to them. And instead of just falling through the program, not changing, there'll be places to tell them, boom, this is where you now look, go here. And then we'll have all these ways for them to assess themselves. And then, so we're trying to create something as individualized as possible. And that's what's so challenging when you're talking to the masses and not one-on-one. Well, because the masses is also looking for what everyone else is doing, mm-hmm. right? So I think one of the things, too, that's really hard for me to, and just th- going back to all the things I've heard you guys say, is that it was hard for me to hear, like, you should back off sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like, that's really hard when you come from a mentality of, like, you have to do more. More is better. And... But then you end up screwing yourself and you like your body. I mean, I want to get into a conversation with you too about nutrition, like later about like hormones and crap of mm-hmm. like doing the body competitions or the fitness competitions. Mm-hmm. But like that's a mentality for women that we feel like we have to do more mm-hmm. in order to achieve the perfect body. Uh, mm-hmm. you, it's a hundred percent correct. It's exercise, and this is what we're truly the most passionate about. Really. I mean, if you listen to our podcast, you can hear our moods change. There's times when we're pissed off and we get real negative. In fact, I think you what? messaged Emotional? us at one point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, but really what we're truly, truly passionate about is sending the right message that is going to get people in to fitness the right way. And, the, and that's going to give them long-term uh, health and total wellness, not just wellness of the body in terms of the aesthetic, but wellness of the mind and feeling good about yourself. Cause that's what lasts forever. And when it comes to exercise, a lot of people, men and women, they treat exercise many times as a punishment. Yes. And what I mean by that is like, 
oh gosh, yesterday I ate all that cake at that party. I'm going to go to the gym and beat myself up and just burn it off. Or God, I'm looking, you know, they look in the mirror and I look like shit. I need to go work out. That's it. I'm going to be motivated to work out because I look horrible. And the way you treat your body when you hate it is completely different than the way you treat your body when you love it. And the difference in the way you train is it's dramatic. It's the difference between going to the gym and exhausting yourself on cardio for hours at a time and doing these movements that you think are going to you know, change your butt or whatever you hate about yourself versus going into the gym and listening to your body. Because sometimes what you, need to go when you, what you need to do when you go to the gym, I mean, you come home from work, you're exhausted, you're stressed out. Maybe you have a young child at home. You're not getting any sleep. Maybe you need to go to the gym, sit in the, in the aerobics class and meditate by yourself. In reality, that's going to benefit your body more at that moment. But you're not going to do that if you hate yourself. You're going to go in and punish yourself. I think two things there. One, we talk a lot about how people see food and exercise as a transaction. And for us, we talk all the time, eating is not a transaction. You need to eat because you love your body and you want to fuel it and you want to be good to it. And then you exercise for the same reason. And like, yes, nutrition is obviously a part of that and it is a part of you know any effective workout program, but they you can't have them intrinsically tied together. Like you need to view them as separate things. Still, you need to not think, oh, today is a rest day. So I don't get any carbs. Like your body needs carbs. You know, you can't, there's no such thing, right. As like a good food or a bad food. And it shouldn't be tied to what you're doing. I think the second thing that we have started talking a little bit about, and that I think is kind of the next wave for us is like, how do you change your body while still loving what it is right now? Like how can Mm. you appreciate what you have and still honor the fact that you want to make it better. So I mm-hmm. had a, uh, so I, I'm lucky enough to have a girlfriend that's very, very um, in tune with this in, this side of wellness. And we can sit there and we can have these deep conversations about this. And we talked about that exact thing because you can be objective about your body and you can have a body image that you don't connect to your self image, which is you can make them separate, which is good, right? You can look at your body and say, here's some parts that I want to work on, but it's not going to change my self image. And we were talking about like how to, okay, what if someone wants to lose weight or wants to change how they look? How do they do that uh, while loving their body at the same time? And it got to this point here where we started talking about, okay, let's pretend for a second that you truly love your body. And what I mean, what I mean by love your body is the way you would love your child. Like you just want them to be, feel good and be healthy. You feed your child according to that. You don't feed your child according to your fat or your skinny or you need you know, those types of things. If you do, let's you're horrible. And if you're right, let's <laughs> hope not. So if you truly love your body, uh, how would you? That's, that's how a would very you, good point. That right is. There. That's a very good point right there because that's a fucking battle in itself right it there. Yeah. How would you eat if you did? How would you treat your body physically? How would you exercise? And what is the physical representation of somebody that is at peace with themselves and loves themselves? And that physical representation looks like a fit, lean individual. It is literally a side effect of those things. It is not the, that is, that ends up not even being the goal. It just becomes a reflection. We had, uh, yesterday we had the, the honor of having Paul check in here. And if you're not familiar with who he is, he's like a godfather in, uh, fitness and wellness. And he's just, he can be out there, but he is absolutely brilliant. And Mm. he was talking about what he does before he eats a meal. We had dinner with him the night before. And I noticed when he'd get his food, he put it in front of him. He put his hands around the Mind food. Mind you, he's not a religious person. So yeah. if you don't know who he is, he's not religious. At so all. To see him do this was... Yeah. He, puts his, very he puts his hands around the food. He puts his head down. He kind of looks at it and he comes up and he starts eating. And so you're like, okay. And you kind of expect Paul to do, you know, off the wall kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So I asked him about it and he says, oh, well, I have a con- conversation with the food, which is classic Paul, say something yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 And he says... He lost everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just 80%. Immediately. Yeah. And he says, you know, I asked the food... Uh, if, you know, I thank the food for this energy transfer, I ask my body and I check with my body if this is the right food for it and what I'm going to get from it. And he has this whole conversation, which is a lot like prayer. And it kind of dawned on me that, uh, you know, cultures all over the world for thousands of years have prayed over food. And is it because, and, and they've benefited from it. That's why it's part of their culture. And Paul does it and it benefits him. And I thought to myself, I said, it's not necessarily the prayer or the words. All he's doing is he's slowing down and he's asking himself, his true self, is this what my body wants? Mm-hmm. Now think about that for a second. If we did that all the time, it would be rare that we would have foods that are probably not serving us. Now, if I'm at my daughter's birthday party and I'm celebrating her, you know, her seventh birthday and, you know, we make a cake and I may do that over the food and I, it, that, that cake, I'm going to eat it. You know, this is, that food at that point 
doesn't necessarily mean nutrition and nutrients. It at that moment means celebrating what's happening here, right? With the birthday. Um, but most of the time, that's not the case. Most of the time I'm eating dinner. I'm, I'm, you know, maybe I'm with friends, but usually I'm not. I'm with my girlfriend or whatever. If I take the time in front of my food to do something like that, my own version of it, whatever it is, I'm much more likely to make a food choice that is quote unquote the right food choice. Now the so problem with this message is that you have it's, to go, oh. it's so <laughs> the whole time. The problem with this message yeah. is it's so it's too far for most people and they're not they're not ready for that level of awareness. Like you, it, then that's why Paul literally tur- either if you if you listen to Paul check either one you are just like glued to every word he says because it's so powerful for you or you turn right. you turn him off immediately yeah. because go, he's, crazy t- town and he's, touching, the box. he's yeah. touching areas you don't want to. Yeah. Well, you described just that one interaction of him doing that with his food and it was the first thing all of you said like, oh, okay, weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> right. And because yeah. you know that's what everybody's thinking. Yeah. yeah. And, and, we, and that's why we have to preface, preface yeah. it like that because right right away you can't help but think that but when you actually just let the man talk and yeah. you know and think open mindedly like the w- way he's communicating the man's brilliant and he's been doing he's been talking about shit way before the science had came out it's just his the, language he uses uh, yeah. and it's Sal brought that up you know if he can be able to like almost interpret for him you know it's but a lot he's easier not, for people like me he's not worldwide for a reason because yeah. that it's just people are and I, and this is where i hope mind pump really helps and this is why the show has to go with the program is because if we're talking about trying to get individualized with people, we all know that even our badass programming and all the best stuff that's out there, nothing is more powerful than helping people connect the dots with the relationship with food, the relationship with their body and relationship with exercise. Those fucking three things will change everybody's life when they put that together. But most people spend their whole lives just trying to figure out one or two of them. Well, the thing that I remember when I first started listening to you guys was, okay, and no offense, I was kind of like, all right, these right, they're going to like try to get us to do some freaking bodybuilding workouts and it's not really geared towards women and they're just going to yeah. be so like myopic on like, these are the moves you need to do. And mm-hmm. then I started listening to you further. And first of all, I've been listening to you since you guys first started. So it's kind of, it's oh, wow. so cool to oh, see you shit. guys. Wow, you've been so I'm like an OG. Oh, yeah. She yeah. Knows, no, and yeah. she is. And you know what? She's actually given me feedback on our show that I truly appreciate. No, I really you do. You tell me about that. I was like, oh, oh I always gosh. love that. Like yeah. healthy well, criticism. Okay. Well, you're you're yeah. a big reason why you guys we, you're so a much. bit That's you're why. a very big yeah. reason why uh, we started really sell because let's be honest. We get thousands of people fucking telling us what we're doing wrong. You know, everybody wants to everybody <laughs> yeah. wants to everybody wants to tell us what we're not doing and what we need to do. So we get that a lot. But when we receive that from you. We thought we had a lot of respect already for what you guys were doing. And each of us kind of sat in the room and said, like, OK, we need to really be aware of of this. And we now have this large platform. We're affecting a lot of people that look up to us and direct them. And like we have to really evaluate what are, are we letting our outside life bleed into our message that we know is so important. And we all checked ourselves that like as much as we thought those episodes were powerful and they got a point across, they also had an energy about them that we're, we don't believe like we don't we don't believe in that but I knew where you were going what I'm referring to is there was so many episodes at first where I was like I it it wasn't no, so much a turn off as it was like well I, I know what they're against, but what are they for? Mm. And so that's kind of the piece mm. where I was like, hey, guys, just so you know. Like, <laughs> Can you remind us? Yeah. Lay a little like two cents here. But like um, that's kind of as I, I stuck with it because I knew I was like, I know where they're going with this. I just want to I want to keep listening. Mm. Um, and that's the evolution that I saw where I was like, wow, they're just they're opening their minds to so many things that are out there that people you're not going to change anyone's mind. Like right. It's like the equivalent of Facebook, all the political posts. Like no one's going to change their mind by reading your post and be like, oh, my gosh, now I'm going to become a great de- point. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> wow, I think I'm going to go register as a Democrat today. Like yeah. that's just not going to happen. So like I knew where you guys were going with it, but like I saw the evolution. And I'm like, this is really cool because now it has helped me. And it's mostly like I kn- I know how smart you all are. You have like collective knowledge that's years and years. But like the piece that was missing for me at the beginning and and how I've seen you evolve is like there's so much out there that you want to just you want to explore it and you want to be open minded to it and like welcome people in that way instead of just like be, you don't want to just be another person that's preaching whatever Kool-Aid you're selling. Yeah, you know? we, we had a lot yeah. of uh, especially when we first started, there was a lot of uh, anger um, towards uh, an industry that uh, hasn't served people well at all. And I know it's a consumer-driven industry. I do understand that. And I understand that we're the ones that create this industry that 
advertises towards our insecurities, makes us feel shitty. I mean, who honestly can go through a fitness magazine and feel good about themselves? I mean, very few people. You go through it and you end up feeling shitty. You know, uh, they have studies now to show this, that when people go through social media and they look at fitness posts, they feel worse about themselves. And so we were angry about a lot of this. We were angry about the lies, partly because we worked in the industry, but a big part of it, I'll be honest with you, is we were victims of it. Yep. You know, uh, we are we, we make no qualms about talking about the insecurities that drove us to exercise. I mean, I was a, I was a painfully skinny kid who felt very ina- inadequate, didn't feel very, you know, I, I, my father was this athletic strong guy and here I was this book, bookworm. And I got into lifting weights because I thought it would turn me into something uh, that I thought I needed to be. And when you're that kid and you're impressionable and you feel that way and you look in these advertisements, it's like, and it says, you know, take these five bottles of pills and you'll look like this. And here's how you become manly. And how's, and I spent thousands and thousands of dollars on supplements that did nothing to me, which except maybe contribute to autoimmune issues that I developed later on as an, as an adult. And then as a trainer working with clients who've come to me in this particular, in the same situation, we were angry. And so the first, you know, 50 episodes was calling people out. And, you know, our, our theme when we first started was zero fucks. That was our hashtag, yeah. right? Yeah. And it was zero literally, fucks. it was, it was li- the shock and awe approach. Yeah. It was and a we, business strategy when you yeah. look at it. I mean, we were trying, we were <laughs> sold trying, like 10 we're, of those if shirts. We're keeping it, if we're keeping it real, <laughs> it awesome. we can't, we, we, we don't want to be peddling shit. We want, we don't want to, we don't want to do what everybody's done before us. So, but we did have to get attention, you know? And so the kind of just like, ah, the very beginning was that was it look at us. So, and then let us kind of explain things to you. So it, I, I definitely think and we uh, don't have very good filters. So, you know, what's <laughs> on our mind tends to come out. It's not working. Huh? Thank yeah. God it worked. Yeah. But it was really good. I think I'm just a geek that way where I'm like, I'm listening to you guys talk about all this stuff. And I remember Adam, I feel like you used to be more like guarded and now you're just like an open book talking about everything with your childhood. And <laughs> so, so great. Yeah. What, what's crazy is that, I mean, that's my personality. What When we started, I had to be this like, you got to wine and dine. Well, no, I had to be, I <laughs> yeah. had to be like this the bodybuilder. I had to be the bodybuilder guy. And, you know, I remember when we had Craig, he was with us for the first and that never worked out. And it, it just, it Craig did. was another host that we first started with. <laughs> Imagine Craig the testosterone. You guys like. know Craig, right? Do you, you, I Craig Caperso, bodybuilding.com. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. buddy of ours, we've done a few episodes with him where we've interviewed him, but we actually started with him and the dynamic just didn't work. And But we knew that like that bodybuilding world was so important that we got a hold of it because they're just as fucking bad too. I mean, if, if anything, they're the wor- I think they're the worst as far as extremes. And I really saw this when I went through the whole you know, competitive world and it blew my mind what I had seen. And I knew we needed that. And I kind of wanted to use Craig's clout to help us in that direction because he had, he, he had similar views as we did. And so it was, but it didn't work. And so I had to kind of take on this voice of, you know, the bodybuilder side, even though I never really felt that way. So part of that was, I was kind of oversharing the part of me that really wasn't complete. What you guys have seen is, You've you've seen really me now because you've watched you've listened for this long, uh, like even to my Instagram. Like my Instagram was built to, as a business. I started the day I started it. I turned it on not because I wanted to connect to friends and talk to people. I started it because I had a plan to build a, a social media business. So from the very moment, everything you ever saw me post, write about, talk about, I was trying to learn how to deliver my message. And the irony of all of it is, it's come full that what I grew and built my little business off of originally. It was totally not me and my personality. It was what I needed to get the attention of others. I knew that if I put myself on this platform and showed you that I could change my physique like that, that you would respect me. Because unfortunately, they get so much That's respect. That's the currency that people, you know, Well, and the irony of that is that is what you hate about the fitness industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I got totally. it. And I, so, which is also like what people like scratch their head. They think like I've evolved. And I extra hate yeah. it. They thought I evolved like <laughs> during the show. Like, for example, I worked for Orange Theory. Like, that doesn't make sense. I'm sitting here talking to you guys about what I see about group training. It's impossible. So why would I go work for that? Why well, I went and worked for a company like that, knowing that I could influence the, ent- the community within that gym. It's a small box. I saw the direction of where it was going. I knew I could influence those people. And then that's, we started doing seminars within that. And they actually stopped us from now, doing Now, it. to be clear, that's not to say there hasn't been a tremendous amount of growth from all of us oh, as we've oh, done the show. Oh, in the last two years, I've yeah. grown more in the last two years than I did in the, the previous three. So I'm not saying that I didn't. I'm just saying that 
my who I really am and like that a lot of the expected those things. Oh, you're just I, you're growth minded. Yeah. From day one. That's absolutely that's that's yeah. my personality and I, I feel like I finally got to be me towards the end. And I but I had to put on this like bodybuilder face for everybody. And I, oh. and I used to tell these guys behind scenes I would he, be like He used to actually get angry because we would get messages from people and they would be think they would say things like calling Adam like a bro or you know whatever, and he get really angry and be like, "Well, this is he's like they yeah. people think that that's the o- only side." They're like, "That's cute. You're trying that move, you know, <laughs> and, like uh, like you don't know anything about mobility or yeah. sports performance, and you're just a but it's okay. Builder. It's okay because I've we've all known that this is and this is why this works with the three of us is that and and, and Doug four of us that the mission is much bigger than any any of us individually. And so all of us are willing to take criticism one way or have to take on a role to get a message because we know that the biggest way we can impact people is going to be by helping them connect those dots we talked about. Because I think that's the, the psychological part of being healthy and being in shape is, is that is the part. It it's is. Everything. It's everything. Right. It's a, the a food part is like it, it's so easy after that. OK, so my question for you, then taking it back to our original conversation about CrossFit. What do you think needs to change day to day in CrossFit boxes for that to become the goal? I, so with two, number one, uh, take the programming, eliminate. Uh, this is very simple. Take the Olympic lifts and treat them uh, like their own. As a specialty. In, yeah, as yeah. their own specialty and don't insert them into fatigue based programming. So what I was saying earlier is as you fatigue, form starts to break down mm-hmm. and some exercises that's OK when form breaks down a little bit. Like if I'm doing curls. Or if I'm doing like a Which even, crossfitters do a lot, yeah, yeah. No. yeah. Or, a lot of curls, or even an overhead press. Like if I get fatigued and my form breaks down a little bit, it doesn't go from safe to super dangerous, right? Or a sit up or an air squat, right? Or, yeah, what happens? But Olympic lifts, they go from right. safe to dangerous very quickly. So that's number one. Number two, and that's that's purely like a safety mechanical, totally okay, totally a safety thing. Because all, I mean, every single person I've trained that's come and been injured from CrossFit, that's how they got injured, was mm-hmm. from the fatigue based, you know, stuff with the Olympic lifts or the, or power movements like box jumps when they're fatigued and then they fall or hit their shins or whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, the second thing I would say with CrossFit is really, it's because CrossFit is a loose affiliation. A lot of people don't know this, but the CrossFit boxes, they're franchise, but they're very, it's a very loose type of franchise. So they're very autonomous. They have a lot of kind of freedom. And right, so, they can do actually yeah. anything they want. Pretty there, much, there needs to be some leadership there to organize so everybody's on the same page and they're all. Which is what Bloodsy talked about. Yes. Yeah, yes. that would I'd say that would be a, a huge benefit. Be and big. Now the, this, this is cool. why we really liked him because yeah. he did he does see this, you know. Right. Yeah. Now the cool thing is, and here's the good and the bad. The good is I like things to be free and for for laboratories of experiment to happen. You know, I like that because. The best will rise and grow, and the horrible ones will shut right. down, yeah. which is good. But the bad part about it, from a business standpoint, is it's under the umbrella of CrossFit, and if in the name, right? Mm-hmm. And if you have a lot of fails, which you're which you're going to have when you have that much freedom, it could tarnish and damage the name of CrossFit, which could damage the brand. So imagine which is what it's done, right? Yeah, right. Like imagine if McDonald's had this real loose franchise where <laughs> this McDonald's over here could serve. You know, you uh, sell spaghetti yeah, yeah, and ex- blankets. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what's funny? Did you watch the well, documentary? That's the difference. Did you watch the Ray Kroc doc- documentary? No, that's from Mitch Hedberg. What uh, I just oh, said. Oh, okay. Oh. So I'm not taking credit for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that guy's a legend. So <laughs> McDonald's actually ran into that when they first started tra- franchising. It was that exact thing? You had some McDonald's open yeah. up and they were selling like chicken wings and you know, you know and, and biscuits. And right. then this guy over here. So they kind of streamlined that. So a little bit of that needs to happen. But I. So far from observing CrossFit and the direction it's going, it looks like it's not. It looks like it's moving forward in a good way. It doesn't look like it's going backwards, and it definitely doesn't look like it's stagnant. It just, it needs to separate from sport. I got. I feel like. I but to keep what re- does that look like on a day? So that's what I'm okay. asking. So like, yeah, I, I hear average. you, and I agree with you. But like, if I'm walking into a CrossFit gym and I'm you know average Claire over here, like middle of the whiteboard, so this, stealing my crap. What does it mean for me? What it means for you is like that will never exist for you again unless you are wanting to compete in in the sport of CrossFit. And if so, if you're just wanting to get in shape, then the programming looks completely different. Mm-hmm. It can't look anything like it looks like, but it has deadlifts, it has squats, it has overhead press, all the shit you like, but it's taught, it's taught to you in the right manner. So if you, if you come in and you're like, I love this CrossFit thing, is it the movement you like, or is it the crazy class thing? And this is where people, this is the awareness thing where you have to, you have to ask yourself, 
is are you in what, for the entertainment? Or what are, are you, you there? Right what there? is what is it that's really drawing drawing to you? And is that whatever that is? Okay, ask yourself. And it, and no, and you know damn well, especially if you listen to our show, is it what is what's best for my body? And then you go from there. Yes. I was just going to say, like, that's something that's evolved for me personally, where I have originally I started CrossFit and it's like, oh, I want to get in shape and oh, I want to be a badass and I want to go, 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 go. I want to PR every single day. I want to PR every single day. Mm-hmm. Joy was and real concerned about winning the warm up. Always. It was very competitive, <laughs> beating all the boys. This is why you're an awesome person. I yeah, should have listened yeah. to talk were about you, Were you an athlete before you ever, you were an athlete growing up, right? And competing? I was a dancer. A dan- Well. But you know. were a marathon, you were a, <laughs> had run a lot of marathons and had like... And you have a very competitive personality. I was going to say, yeah. a better so was, question to ask would be... I was very active. Let's okay. put it that way. Yeah. I was doing everything and, and anything. And you look... I mean, you look like... You, I mean, if I, if I... if I I can tell... These shoulders very, are from my father. Okay. So I didn't really... You know, I can lift... Oh, we I, went to Costa Rica a couple weeks ago and like people... Men on the on the like side of the road were like, oh, fuerte. Like, <laughs> as she walks by, we were like, even in another country, people can't ignore Joy's shoulders. That's awesome. <laughs> that does not happen to me, unfortunately. <laughs> so you flex for them. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 So... But starting CrossFit was one of those things where my mentality was, I just want to kick the shit out of these workouts and I want to beat everyone and I want to be the first, the, you know, the top person on the whiteboard. And I'm still probably and one of the- And you would like get pissed on workouts where like they didn't take a score and she'd be like, well, how do I know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, how do other people know what I did today? I was God, nutty. I so identify with Yeah, I was nutty. <laughs> yeah. and, and so over the years, I don't know if it's age, I don't know if it's just like, it kind of gets old. And I'm not saying- Again, like we have a podcast about CrossFit, so I'm not like shitting on it, but mm-hmm. but it's more of that the mentality around it is exhausting. Like I'm kind of tired now and I'm like, so now I go in, but it's also tied to my insecurities in the past of like body image and trying to attain some certain physique. And then we've just been recently talking on our, sh- our show about how I kind of came to this realization that I'm like, I've been fucking working my ass off since I was 20 in the gym, running, whatever. And looking at workouts as the transaction with food. And what I came to realize is like, that's just not healthy. And I don't want to come to the gym with that mentality anymore because it's just, it's just not good for me. And, and I have to credit you guys too, for helping me see that because that was just a mind shift for me of just working out is not a punishment. And also that I was spending so much time just beating the shit out of myself mentally and physically and my body wasn't changing. Hmm. And then I was like, well, do I need, there's like, there's always certain parts of our bodies that we don't like. Right. And so that was the piece where I'm like, I just don't want to do this anymore. And, you know, while I love it for working out, I don't go in with the same veracity or like the same, you know, feeling of I have to kick everyone's ass or I have to like lift more weight. Um, I just, I'm trying to be more intuitive. With I my think body. it's important to to say That's though awesome, that that by the way. that uh, I'm going to go in and beat myself up. It, attitude is not exclusive to CrossFit, so that no. happens. Yeah, in yeah. all that happens fitness. in spin class, step class, Thank and you. I think it's also really like mm-hmm. that's the mentality that you get. In, it's, uh, I mean, I know I'm sure it's there for men as well, but like for women, you're very much taught like you have to earn your meals. Mm-hmm. Like you are, you know, the only reason that you're allowed to eat is because you cheat day. Have, right? Exactly. Well. Even just like if, you know, as a woman, it's almost like expected that you're on a diet, right? It's almost expected that you hate your body. It's almost expected that like there's something about you that you are currently trying to change in some way. Mm. And kind of to say, you know, to take it back, like you were saying you got to this point where you're like, my body's not changing. And then also to what um, we were saying earlier about like if you were to really honor your body and feed it well and listen to what it wants, that looks like just ends up looking like a healthy, lean person. One thing that like so. I have an 18 month old. My body obviously in the last two years has gone through a ridiculous amount of change. And part of that is is telling now the story of like, you get to a point where you just have to decide that your body tells a story of where you are in your life and what your priorities are. And it's like, my priorities right now aren't to go in the gym and kick everybody's ass. Mm -hmm. Like my priorities are to be at home with my son and are to have, have, you know, home cooked meals and get a little bit of extra sleep every once in a while instead of getting up and going to the gym. And like, if that means that I weigh 10 more pounds than I feel like I quote unquote should, then that's the story of my life in this moment. It is. And let me ask you this. While you were pregnant, did you love your body more or hate your body more? Because I've noticed with my clients yeah. when they're pregnant, they're, it's either one or the other. I mm-hmm. actually, I feel like I felt pretty neutral. I will also say that I went through some really serious postpartum depression. Mm-hmm. And if I look back on it, I, that definitely started during my pregnancy. <clears throat> and so I didn't feel, 
I don't I didn't have as quite like the same like ethereal pregnancy experience that I think a lot of people have of like, oh my God, you know, I'm I'm the sacred vessel. I did not. <laughs> That's like the first. I went to a class like that. Claire yeah. is so. I am not that person. Oh, I you're am... so like Justin. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Like, it's, it's so good. thank you. I am. I'm like she's I, not a hugger. Not a hugger. Like, like I hugged. Like, I'm, I'm like, hugging the shit out of you before yeah. you leave. Then you already did. I believe we Everyone hugged was, you. Like, hugging. I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and we're touching. Yeah. This is happening. <laughs> but I just am like I'm not in my body in that way, mm-hmm. and I always just sort of you know I like I'm not the type of person. I never you know. I don't believe in like soulmates. I don't believe in like, you know, all that kind of touchy stuff. Touchy feely I'm shit. not a touchy feely person. Yeah. I'm just really not. Forget about it. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not there. And I'm really, I'm not like a hippie dippy crunchy person. You like, were always, <laughs> you were also raised with hippie dippies. Oh my which gosh. Is why okay, so, oh, so yes. you rebel. See, I grew basically. up in Santa Cruz, so. Yeah. Boulder. Okay. There we go. Oh, Boulder. Air oh, five. high five. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I just grew me. up all her around. dad, her dad invented celestial seasonings. So my dad started <laughs> celestial oh, wow. seasonings. So like, wow. Really like real bold, real like, hippie, real, like, real hippie, bolder. real deal. And like my godmother is an herbalist. Like guys, like I didn't go to the doctor as a kid. I went to the chiropractor. Like mm-hmm. anyway, that's a whole other episode. <laughs> Justin's real excited. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. In house, so, uh, so you know so the country. first day that I met him, I told him I said the, the first words in my mouth were I hate chiropractors. Yeah, and he's like <laughs> he had to eat that, but instantly won me over because oh, no. he looked back at me with me too. Welcome, <laughs> Doctor Brink. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, but anyway, all that to say that like I just I don't think I really had that experience in my body before and. But then prior to that, I was kind of in that same boat as Joy is like, no matter what I did, I weighed 125 pounds. I'm 5'3". Like, that was my body. And then I got pregnant. Obviously, all of that changed and it hasn't gone back. And Mm -hmm. so in the last, you know, year and a half, having to reevaluate my relationship with my body of like, you never get your body, quote unquote, get it back. Mm -hmm. And just going through that transformation of like, okay, what does it mean to love my body now? And what does it mean to make choices that I feel like to your guys' point is like, this is how I honor my body in this moment. But that doesn't necessarily mean that my goal is to be this like lean machine. And I think that that is sometimes what gets lost in that conversation is like people assume that if you're making those choices, that is based on the goal to be this like lean athletic machine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That doesn't necessarily isn't true for everyone. And no, th- this I, is yeah. how CrossFit works as a sport because sometimes it will. Right. There's nothing wrong with you setting a goal that, you know what? I'm 35 years old this year. I'm going to get in the baddest shape ever. I'm going to do all these things. And you set a goal. It's like what I did with competing. Mm -hmm. I knew damn well going into that. I was never going to, I wanted to get out of it as soon as I could. But the, I set a goal that I watch me show these motherfuckers how quick. It was an isolated experience. Absolutely. And, and I would never ever tell somebody they should eat and live like that on Mm -hmm. a regular basis ever. I would never tell anybody. But it's the freaking social media crap. I feel like has just exacerbated the problem. So like, Oh, hundred percent. So like, I just want to give an example too of like, you guys love shreds. They're they're a great company. (laughs) Shreds for life. For life. Um, So the, I think I asked a question a couple of weeks ago of like, how do you coach someone who has an an unrealistic goal? Because that comes into play for me personally of like, I think I had an unrealistic goal on myself of like what I wanted to look like. Now to a little bit of background is Claire and I started um, counting macros like a year and a half ago. Right. And uh, just, I don't know, we, you wanted to really zone in for after yeah, um, it was in like kind of the peak of, the, having... of my postpartum depression. And I was like, I just need something to like ground me during the mm-hmm. day. I was like not even two months postpartum. So I was still at home. And yeah, yeah. I needed like an anchor. So, and it was great for that. So food, a lot of times we create food um, uh, and we treat food like it's a it's a way we can control a part of our life yeah. and make us feel in control when things feel out of control. Having a child uh, is one of the, I have two kids and it's one of the most, it's awesome, but it's also one of the most out of control moments you'll ever experience your entire life yeah. because nothing is ever the same again. You don't sleep like nothing you, you goes can, as planned. Your right? house is a fucking mess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, all you of a sudden it's clean about, up. Right? So yeah. it's a very so, difficult time. And, and it, then on top of that, the postpartum depression thing, like I did not feel connected to my kid at all. Right. So it was like, mm. you and know, you feel, the, you pro, did you I feel guilt a lot of guilt about that? Yeah. And I just felt like, mm. what the heck is wrong with me? Like yeah. maybe I wasn't supposed to be a mom and like, don't get me wrong. I love, you know, I, really my kid my child's name is miles i wanted only the best for him but i did not feel like he was mine mm-hmm. and so throughout all of that in theory you have this switch in the back of your mind that's like but this is worth it because look at this like amazing child mm-hmm. who who loves me and i love and like i didn't have that well i think number one i th- think it's important that we hurry up and destroy the whole the, the societal myth that 
every that being a parent is the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, it's it's Happy hard. Happy Mother's Day. It's, <laughs> there's, it's, for, yes. Oh my God, what the irony of that? It's true. That it's, was money. It's, you're gonna take my it's, job. Doug, can you put a sound effect in oh, right yeah. there? Yeah. Yes, I would you love a sound my effect line. right there. Remember that yeah. time right there. It's uh, number one. It's very difficult. It sucks a lot of the times. Yeah. Um, and, uh, if you're a woman in particular, you are, you feel guilty or you're led to feel guilty. If you say any of that shit now, dads, we get the little bit of that freedom. Like I could go tell my buddies like, man, it sucks. Kid was up. Right. Like when moms start talking like it, you can hear them careful with what they say. Cause I don't want these people to think like, and well, oh, maybe I shouldn't feel this way. Well, What's it's going because on? then, mm-hmm. I mean, and this is a whole other conversation, but then you get that, like that stigma of being like the, you know, the crazy mom who drowns her kids in the bathtub. Yeah. Oh like, you know, just like because, right, exactly. Yeah. Like, just because like I did not have any affinity, mm-hmm. you know, it, that doesn't mean that I wanted to throw my kid out the window. Right. Mm-hmm. But that is kind of like the black and white, especially with new moms is that people, and I think that luckily that conversation is changing in our society right now about like what things new parents really need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's sort of like, if you are not in this like, you know, glowing aura of motherhood yeah. then you might as well then you don't deserve your kids so i think uh, it's with, refreshing to hear you say I that think, my wife went yeah. through the same mm-hmm. same process and like really had a hard time you know she didn't was uncomfortable the whole time and like it was yeah. oh don't you love being pregnant well, and we like, every, to do that you know, with everything oh, on our podcast oh, she, she was talking, like ah get this out of me I, yeah. I, so you got sitting in this room, obviously you can see like yeah. i'm a pretty petite person i would honk the horn of my belly whenever i got in and out of the car like <laughs> I had a, but everyone was like, you had such a healthy, easy pregnancy. I'm like, yeah, but like, I still was carrying around a child in my body. Yeah. Like that just sucks. It's still just, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what Claire, an and I try, yeah. Yeah. Claire and I try to do a lot of on the podcast is just talk very candidly yeah. about our lives. And that's that an way. awesome like, story that you yeah. to share that. Cause that's people, what people need to hear. That. Well, Absolutely. women will write us about marriage, about having babies. Like, cause we lay it all out on the show. We're like, yeah. mm. we marriage hacks. Like we talk about like tricks we play on our husband just to get through the day sometimes. <laughs> like, you know, oh, man. like yeah. marriage is hard and relationships are hard and, and being babies are hard and being a, yeah, working. It's so I mean, stop the freaking soulmate memes on hashtag Facebook. Yeah. Hashtag he's my I, best I listen solely just to get the playbook. The pull up really so I could be two top. steps ahead of her. Mm. That's my strategy. Oh, God, I, I don't no. tell her. I want to punch them the or slap them like this. Where you're like, yeah. you're going to kill someone. Like, <laughs> one day this is going to go. Partner workouts. Hashtag. And now and now you. You, yeah, yeah you Stop yeah. it. Stop I, I, with the small mates. At the small sa- mates need to die. And yeah. at the same time, if you are one of those people, that's okay. That's great. That's fine. We love you. <laughs> no, no <laughs> fuck that shit. <laughs> okay? I'm Thanks, tired Justin. of it. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. And we're judging you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but one last that's question, too, so we can tie this up, too, because I really want to get back to the, the whole diet piece is like when you have unrealistic goals mm-hmm. and like how you talk to women specifically, because let me tell you this, and I want to hear your thoughts on this, too, Adam, is like, so I started counting macros with Claire, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, year Christmas and a half last year. And I'd ago. never done any, I never paid attention to anything I ate ever. Except for that time you were a vegan. Yeah, whatever. Um, so, <laughs> that one time. In yeah, college. That one time for five years. Um, so so it was really interesting for me. I had a lot of resistance going in, but I got to know what it, what it was. And I wasn't like horribly turned off by it, but I lost a ton of fat. I was extremely lean to a point where um, people would stop me in the grocery store and be like, do you compete? Mm. Do you do bodybuilding competitions? And then like, I don't know. It was just, it was, I looked gross. I looked back in pictures and I'm like, holy shit. And so my body was like, fuck you. Um, we're not doing this anymore. I completely rebounded. I gained all the way back, which was like, fine. I mean, my, my body needed it anyway, but it mind screwed me because I thought that my body was supposed to be that way. Just because I started paying attention to what I was eating, my body re- responded right away. And then when it started to, I lost my sex drive, I lost my period. I was like, just my hormones went to shit. And, but then in my mind, I was like, but why didn't my body stay there? And I was tied to a number and I was tied to how I looked. Mm. And then it, when it went back, I was like pissed. It, I went through some like major like psychological stress over that crap. And so I feel like there's, like people don't talk about that either because we look at photos and we're like, well, look at her with like 8% body fat. Like I want to achieve that, but no one's talking about how we aren't supposed to do that. Mm. And so when someone comes to you with a goal, like not, not about like, I want to do a show like out of that realm, but how do you talk to someone about that and make that known that can you just like accept your body and like, this isn't just a realistic thing, a healthy thing that you should be doing. Well, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty recent that we've considered, shredded as uh, fit and healthy. It's actually quite recent in human history. If you look at, I mean, men can achieve a certain leanness that's healthy and women can achieve a certain leanness that's healthy. And there's individual variances between in that. 
But this, uh, especially for women, presenting this shredded six-pack striation type look has never been healthy for women and never has. And for anyone who's ever gotten there before, who's a female, you will, you, you stop your period, like you said, you lose your sex drive. These are all very strong signals that your body is not doing uh, very well at all. It's not healthy. Now, men can have side effects as well. We just have to get a, a lot leaner to get there. And you got to understand that like fit and healthy doesn't look extreme. You see what I'm saying? It, that's just the bottom line. If you see someone that's extreme, that is not what fit and healthy looks like. And then you that's have to ask yourself point. why our, our boy, you know who just did a great YouTube? Uh, our boy, Juji Mufu. I don't know if you guys have ever seen him or not. That is the best name ever. Yeah, nobody sounds like a cartoon <laughs> dog. Oh, it, well, he hates being he's called a, John. He's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's, the, he's the anabolic a- acrobat and he's uh, what I really liked about him when we first met was um, he a real smart guy, but he's like he was like a computer engineer. So I can't remember what his job title was, but yeah, he worked in a lab, I think. Yeah. yeah. And he was just uh, self-taught in the fitness industry. And so he was he was a pretty damn smart guy for so especially for someone who didn't like he's that's not his profession. You know what I'm saying? He's he does it as a hobby on the side. And he just did a YouTube video about that. It was pretty neat. He he was going through he just moved and he was going through his uh, photo album and he was flipping through and he was showing people. Uh, when he got ready for a magazine. And he if you look at him, you'll see he's he's ripped. He looks amazing uh, pretty much year round. But, you know, he's very real about where he's at right now versus where he was before. And tell, and the, his way he gave his message, I thought it was really good for people to watch just because it was very simple. It wasn't very, it wasn't getting into the science behind it. It was just like, listen, you, you don't want it. You don't want to live that way. When you, to keep your body there is, your, your body's unhealthy. It feels this way. It feels that he's naming off all these things that he goes through when he felt that, just like what you were just explaining right now too. And that right there should be your, your sign. Like I can, I can tell and my body is telling me it's like those of us that ignore it because of our insecurity to want to be like someone else or look a certain way. But the feedback you get is mm. what? Mm-hmm. Awesome. And I feel it's like amazing. It's amazing. Well, no, but the feedback you get from people I'm saying is like when the feedback you get, uh, let me rephrase that. The feedback you get from people is like, you look so good. Yeah. Mm. You look amazing. Uh, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, and, well, and then that think, feeds you in that direction. Well, and yeah. then I think you see those people who also look like that and you're like, well, this must be what the life that they're living. So I guess it's okay. Exactly. Mm. And so it's just. Well, now you know where our passion comes from when we get yeah. heated, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is where, so it, it drove me crazy when, so when I got, when I first did my transformation, it was from fat to fit. Like I said, it was to show people, watch me do this, watch me do it the right way. And I did a whole like documentary on it. That's what started to build my social media. And, you know, one of the things that people just uh, are not doing in the in the bodybuilding community, and this is like, I, I got to meet like some of the best coaches coaching the best guys in the industry. So we're all the cover of the magazine dudes I'm hanging out with and I'm talking to and I'm hearing how they program and how they eat and all the stuff they're taking. And I'm going like, holy shit, like all that. And I'm, and I'm going like, it ain't got, you don't got to do all that for this. Like it's, you can get a lot closer than you think to that. So there's this misconception of what you need to do to get in really good shape also. And that's a major part of the problem is there's this extreme mentality and it's really doing more harm than it is good. And you can actually, you can look pretty fuck. I mean, Sal keeps himself the leanest out of all of us, I'd say year round. And if I were to say who eats the most intuitive and doesn't, it doesn't track and doesn't do any of that shit and looks awesome. And it, I mean, no supplements, no nothing. He stays probably, what are you probably like seven, 8% body uh, fat? I don't know, anywhere between seven to 10 usually. And uh, it's, he's not trying to do right. that. Um, it's, he's it, got his like can of sardines in his pocket. Yeah. He's not eating that, that deep. Uh, bitch. And, and it's again, like your body will it's reflect that when you approach it in, in that way. But again, those extremes that you see uh, in the magazines or on Instagram or whatever, they're not, even those people don't look like that all the time. In fact, you meet some of these bikini Well, athletes even there, there are. There's some of these guys because there are some of them that stay year round look freaking just diced. But and they there's, probably hate their life. And those are like 1% of the actual human being population. Exactly. And I think that's the problem, which is like, you know, we talk about this a ton. Like you, this is this before and after culture. And there's no conversation about like, what does that actually look like in the day to day? What does that actually look like in your mind of like, do you, you know, do you really want to live the life where you look in the mirror and are pinching your body to see where, you know, to see whether or not back to like the food you deserve that day, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, that is just not, it's not the way to live your life. It it sucks though, but, but it'll, I don't know if it'll ever change because 
the the way to get people's attention are these crazy transformations and these the faster the better that's the way our minds i mean we're always trying to do things quicker and faster and we're going that direction even more we're becoming more plugged in more we're downloading more data faster than uh, than we ever have in our lives we're not going back to like that's what scares but see i also see that being a tool for what we want uh i also see through social media, I see both sides of the coin. I see the it getting worse in some areas. And in other areas, realism mm-hmm. is starting to pay off. Once realism and really connecting to people on an authentic level becomes more marketable than the fake stuff. Yeah, let us know because <laughs> <laughs> well, we're working we're, on we're it. Waiting. We'll all be we're rich here. in this room when that fucking happens. <laughs> yeah. But for the time being, yeah. you know, that, that, that's the hardest part, though. That I mean... It's so hard for me not to use my before and after and my. I was gonna say yeah. that like yeah. you could probably post that easily every single day and like <laughs> right. sell a shit ton of programming. Yeah. Go back Thursday it, again. It's yeah. how I built every my page. Time. I yeah. built I built my page off of that shit. Yeah, yeah. And, and now you get to really see who I am. But of course, I'm still running a business, and it would be stupid for me not to do that. So it's such a it's a struggle I deal with daily. Yeah. Knowing that I need to do that to get the attention because that's what the fuck everybody oh. wants. Yeah. But knowing that I'm really not helping. It's like the, did you guys see the debate we got? with the doctor yesterday with over the nutrition thing Mm-mm. oh yes oh, wait which like, one was that? on sal's know. page like 300 oh, something yes. Comments. yes 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 sorry yes, so yes, this yes, doctor yes. posted I was in a bad mood this yeah. is an obesity doctor <laughs> you suck he's an <laughs> asshole sometimes <laughs> he's a is an obesity doctor yeah this what he de- sal was in an ear and he would normally not do this but he did kind of poke at him yeah. and he normally will actually ask a very thought-provoking question Instead that's just in, poking the bear yes and he totally poked him so that was our bad so i want to first i'm preface by apologizing for what happened <laughs> if you're listening but, <laughs> but the message that we were trying to get across to him was he, he had is. this he had an image and it was what was it sound sensible breakfast so it was uh <laughs> yeah, it, there was, were, it, was, it was uh like drink a slim yeah. fast shake and then you're gonna lose weight well, it was the slim fast uh <laughs> advertising is that still a thing? Same. well well, no, well, he wasn't well, selling, well you know he didn't like, well he wasn't selling slim fast yeah, but he was no, using was the same like, thing you can't you can't you can't say that no <laughs> it, it was it was a legitimate post but the what what i was okay he's an obesity doctor so this yeah. is what his specialty right he's in theory a medical professional yes okay and he's and, and he's putting up there that they should have a shake instead of burger and fries and and i'm like yeah no fucking shit right, right. Uh, and I'm sure those people that are super fat know that. I think they know that if they didn't eat a burger and fry and they had a fucking protein shake, they would it would make them lose some weight. Right. That is not solving the problem. And actually giving and that... that's not the problem. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. So I feel like that, you know, us, and this is where, this is the voice that we're trying to be, especially with them. Like, you don't, you'll never find one of us on some young kid who's trying to figure things out and he's saying stupid shit and we just kind of shake our heads. I'm not going, we're not doing, but I am going to come after a doctor who I feel should know better Mm -hmm. and is giving this information because it's in his best interest. It's very predatory. You know, he's putting that out there and, oh, by the way, I have a a way isolate uh, formula I just came up with and, uh, you know, works well with this philosophy. So it was too convenient, you know, not to, to really point at that and poke at it. Is that any different? Then posting the before and after picture, knowing you're gonna get people in the door that way. I, uh, <laughs> why do you think yes, I struggle? Why do you think I struggle with it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why it's fucking hard. Well, I'll like tell you, you said, I'd be doing it every week. You would see that picture repurposed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got a million of them. I I'm know. sitting yeah. on. The only yeah. time I did that, I think it was because the episode they're asking for it again. You know, like because they were remembering like the yeah. process of that. But yeah, hey, that, you don't have to justify your before. And I'm after. just saying, man. I'm, I'm just, just saying, saying that I'm judging you. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think with. Um, you know, uh, just the message needs to change a little bit because the message hasn't worked. People are sicker than ever. Uh, obesity's uh, higher than ever. People feel worse about themselves than ever before. There's a lot of reasons uh, that, you know, it's funny. I was watching something, how, what TV show or movie I was watching the other day where back in the day, I don't know if you guys knew this, in fashion, there were only like four seasons. Yeah. Now there's something like, 16 or 20 or some ridiculous amount of seasons. Oh, no, yeah. No, no, the, what? Whole, like, 50, the 50. fast fashion thing where it's like, you used to actually can like have clothes made and they were your summer clothes and your winter clothes and that was it. And now it's like early spring, mid spring, late spring, yes. early summer. And yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. each time you feel wow. like you look, You have to refresh your You have wardrobe. to not only refresh, but you just look bad if you don't, yeah. right? I don't mm-hmm. look good. And so you have all these uh, these industries that kind of feed into that and fitness isn't helping. And I feel like fitness 
really true it's, fitness it's a, can be it's the a answer. motherfucker when you're a 35 year old too trying to stay in style because you just figured out what the fuck everybody was doing <laughs> yeah. and okay. then like yeah. next week it's you're already, in the wrong season man. yeah dude yeah just it's, do like i do and wait for why, just opa no that's why you have a podcast it doesn't matter what you're wearing you yeah like the big <laughs> See, right thank now. you we, yeah we all have faces <laughs> for radio we said that already thank yeah. you thanks for pointing that out <laughs> thank you. and you were talking about your very stylish jeans earlier. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, I mean, it again. It's uh, it's the message that we try and, and try and put across. You know, we were talking about how do you talk to the person who that's their goal. You know, I had a conversation with a client. I'll never forget. It was very simple, but it was quite mind blowing to her. She asked me. She said, "Sal, what kind of cardio should I do in the morning?" And I said, "Okay, well, what are your options?" She's like, "Well, I can do stairmaster. I can run. I can get on the bike, or I don't know, maybe yoga." And I said, well, which one do you like the most? And she's like, well, I don't know. Just tell me the one that burns the most calories. Right. I said, the one that's going to be the most effective is the one that you like. Mm -hmm. And she was a little bit kind of blown by like mind blowing. Like, what do you mean? Like, don't you want to tell me the one that I'm going to burn the most calories? And I had to teach her, you know, how to approach fitness in a way that was going to really work for someone. Because anybody can get in shape in 30 to 60 days. But can you stay that way forever? And not just what you think the aesthetic form should look like. But where you're actually at peace with yourself, where you and it's a great place to be, you know, it's a really great place to be to walk in the gym and just be like, man, I feel well. The problem there's feel great. there's two ends of the spectrum right now. You have the like super woo woo hippie, like he sounds like sometimes when he talks, and then you have the extreme, which what I was living the bodybuilder world. The and it's like there's the they, they're polar opposites right now, and there's really a way to kind of live in the the middle. You yeah, can absolutely. have a badass aesthetic physique and be strong as a motherfucker and hit PR still and do all that, but you can also meditate. Well, and I think it takes practice, though, to get to that point of, like, truly listening to your body. Like, people all the time used to tell me, like, oh, just listen to your body. I'm like, what am I listening for? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like, that's not something, like, if you're new to working out or you're new, you know, you do, in a lot of ways, need somebody to tell you, this is what you need to do just to get started because you don't have that background of knowing, okay, this is what it actually feels like for my body to feel good. And so you don't know how to get there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when Did you talk you about feeling the signals, okay, imagine you're trying to go to sleep. Now, can you try really hard to go to sleep and will that make you sleep faster? Right, no. No, you just go to sleep. And so <laughs> really feeling uh, the signals that your body's telling you isn't about trying really hard to feel the signals. Once you get past the bowel movement and all that stuff. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's about, you can start listening to other things. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's about just being quiet for a second and just being in the present and then watch what happens. And it sounds simple. It's very difficult to do because everything we do, we have to try real hard to do but it doesn't work that way. I can't sit there and try to get connected. Well, and I here's, just have to relax. And, and, and here's and the thing. Connected. The people that struggle with that the most are the ones that need it the most. And the ones that are practicing and doing it really don't need it that much. Meaning like those hippie, crunchy people that are meditating all the time and breathing really slow and well. Where does the well, crunchy come from? There's no, there's no like- I always granola. wondered that. Granola. Crunchy granola. Oh, yeah. The, okay. they're, not, they're not pushing it. They're not going beast mode like, ever. They're they like chilling all the time. Yeah. And they could use a little beast mode in their life. And the people <laughs> that are going beast mode all the time and have that competitive athlete mentality those motherfuckers are the ones that probably spend a little bit of time meditating and that it's and really what we're trying to help people do is connect those dots on who you are because mm -hmm. we're all so uniquely different also why group stuff is so hard also why maps is so challenging for us to our programming so challenging to try and create it for the masses and that's why our mission is nowhere near done with even with all the shit we have out there you mentioned right now like how we talk and start have, do you know that we do this free 30 day of coaching mm -hmm. okay i don't know if you guys have seen it or even dug around it or whatever but that uh, the concept behind that was okay if someone hired me for 30 days and i had to like give them topics every day how what am i going to cover how would i cover that and we all came up with the, exactly what we cover so each day you get a topic. For example, day one's like protein. And then there's bullet points on it. Real simple. So the average person can pick up some good information if they need it. Or if you know everything you need to know about it, you move on. Then you go to the next day. Maybe next day is like gut flora. And you're like, oh, okay, actually, I don't know a lot about that. Now it has all those bullet points. And, and you also have all of our YouTubes, all of our podcasts right to the minute where we've talked in detail about it, plus all the studies that support whatever we discussed. So people can go through this for free for 30 days and they can just absorb what they want or go through all 30 and absorb the entire month. And it's it's a culmination of you know 500 episodes that we've done plus 250 YouTube videos that we've all com compiled. And and we that's free. And we and give really it for free a, because we feel yeah. like 
This is just barely scratching the foundation and surface of what you should go through and learn before you decide any crazy modality of training. You're like learning about yourself Maps and food. 30 days, check it out. <laughs> that was like a great idea. commercial. I feel like, yeah. Great commercial. Yeah, yeah. Just no, jump I, that I, in I felt like it pertained though to no. what she was saying. And you know? I, I agree with you. And I think that, you know, it is, it is tough for people who, I think maybe when I was giving you that example, it was maybe a little bit misleading because I think that at the end of the day, like you're hard pressed to find an adult who truly has no background, who truly has not tried a bunch of crap before. Right. And who, and I think, you know, it's just, it's hard to separate. Um, What's the crap? Well, I think it's hard to separate <laughs> that within your goals, like back to Joy's original question of like, you know, these, these unrealistic goals of it's hard to tell someone like, here's how to set up your, and we have plenty of um, thoughts about goal setting, but um, here's how to set up your goals so that you have a goal that is not just based around this after picture of your physique mm-hmm. or is not just based around, you know, but it's actually truly a mindful goal. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's actually truly like, and, but that is so abstract. Like how can you write a, you it's, know, it's, it, well, goal? here's a, it's setting a goal like that is like going to college for your, whatever degree you're going for and trying to define the job you're going to do, spending more time right. trying to define the job that you're going to do after you finish the degree than actually going through the fucking degree and learning what you need to learn because you'll never get that fucking job if you don't finish those well, four years that, in front of you. But you might figure out that might not be the job. Ex- and yeah, that might, exactly. Want. And you find out this is not the path I wanted because you haven't, you haven't, it's also why the other day I popped off about somebody asked a question about competing and then the question was like dealing with binging, you know, Adam, when you cut low carb, this, that, and I'm like, I don't think anybody should compete until you start to hone in on the relationship that you have with your body and food. And you should be proving to yourself that you can get in the best shape of your life than you ever have on your own without a coach and someone telling you Mm -hmm. before you ask somebody to put you through that extreme to get on stage in front of other people. Like, why would you do that? That's like playing a sport and never practicing it and then getting out and playing with the fucking pros. Right. That doesn't make sense. It's not like a couch to 5K program. Yeah. No, exactly. (laughs) How did you go from that extreme mentality to like chilling the fuck out? That's like that's not <laughs> well, easy. I think well, we, this we, is I was already I'm I'm we're all a lot more like and that's what drew us all together. Though like I said the bodybuilding version of me was never me. Like I that's not that's so I turned that on because I'm like I'm a very driven like business focused person. And I knew that that's what I needed to do with what's going on in the era. Oh, I see. And so you were actually able to separate that in your mind. Totally. And I think that 100%. is where a lot of people that's get. Why, that's why I hired no coaches. I was on no team. I did it everything. Was like I, a truly outside of like your mentality. Yeah. Right? I wanted to show everybody like that. I had a major chip on my shoulder. I mean, when I, I understand the motivation behind it, but like, it's hard for me to think that someone could go through that and not internalize it in yeah. some way. So you have I'm to a gangster. consider. Yeah, right. No. You have to consider. <laughs> and he's humble that's too. A, oh. Not at all. Not if, at all. Confident if, as fuck. Yeah. If I have yeah. a fault, which I obviously don't, it's humility. Yeah. You have you have to uh, you have to consider um, Adam had been in fitness uh, professionally working with lots of people w- for a while before he ever decided to do that. So he had already developed a good relationship with exercising himself. Before he went into that. Now, if he had not done that, mm-hmm. uh, his motivation may be different. And a lot of people compete with a motivation that isn't ideal. And in fact, most of the eating disorders or some of the worst relationships we see with food and exercise well, it did make come me, from that it world. It made me connect, though, on another level. That I, So I loved, I'm so um, appreciative for that experience because it, it made me connect to people that want that, that are into that so much. I mean, I'll tell you right now. Uh, for sure, when I like someone were to hit me, like top moments in your life, boom, that come out. The, one of those is standing after I went pro in Vegas and just that feeling and like everybody was looking up at me and just like, oh, like I was at a, I was at outside pool. Climbing on the oh, mats. it was just the most, uh, it, it yeah. literally was on another level of experience for me. And I was like, whoa, like right. this. So it's not like you were completely detached from the whole experience. Yeah, no, I was not. I enjoyed every <laughs> fucking minute of all of that. And I got, I got how that could be addicting. Yes. And, and you can, and you can d- identify with, with that really easily. Mm-hmm. And man, that's a, uh, and then where I felt really bad is on Instagram and social media shit, like, we, we put this uh, this false perception out. So like when I started meeting all these, half these kids live with their parents still. And they're like, because that's the only way they, because you can't, there's no money in it. Right. But they put this lifestyle, you know, they, they're driving around their dad's BMW or some bullshit, or they rented it for the weekend. And they they, they put the all of the best of their life, which I, I believe we're all guilty of, right? Including myself. It's, you don't want to put the worst of you out on there. 
So most of what we put out on the, on the social media world for others to see of us is the best parts of our life. And no one does it, I think, better than the, the fitness people. Like they post these, these like make fitness like so, oh, it's so awesome and this. And they glamorize the fuck out of everything. And then they got all, now you have these, oh, this younger generation coming up thing like, oh man, all I got to do is compete in a show, get ripped. And then everybody's going to follow me. And then I get sponsors. I'm going to make all this money. It's like it's such a false perception. It's so off. And there's so many people that are trapped in that. And man, when I was going up through it, I was was blown away at what level to. I thought, well, maybe when I was at the amateur level, I thought, well, maybe it's just because these are amateurs. Mm. When I get up to the pro level, this is where all the really smart people are going to be at, right? Not true. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, oh, shit. <laughs> there's nobody. But and there's, there's a lot of people smart. making a lot of money off that industry. Mm. And it's getting worse before it's getting better. It's, it's growing out of control. Well, let me ask you girls this. You, you both have been exercising yourselves or training for a while, right? You've been doing this for a long time. Considering where you are now with exercise and nutrition, how you view both of them, how different is it for you now than, I don't know, 10 years ago? It's completely different. Completely. I think that before, you know, we talk about that transactional um, relationship and that was, I think, completely where we both were of like, for me, I I have no athletic background. Like CrossFit is the first time I've ever been an athletic person before this. I I mean, I was active. I was a, a raft guide. I was a backpacking guide. Now, don't but discount show choir. I was in show choir. <laughs> right. Which, you know, there's like some, there's some strategic breathing. Why didn't we open with the song? Why didn't you hell? sing when we opened with Justin? I mean, yeah. it's going to happen. Uh, I'll just, yeah. we'll, do, we'll do one at the end. Has done. Done? The voice done. of an angel. <laughs> yeah. How good are you, you at jazz squares? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can you do the dirty can... dancing lift? Let's okay. try that later. You know what? I'll harmonize he does that to me (laughs) all the time yeah (laughs) but I think so for me like anytime that I would kind of make a foray into that it was very like um it was not my lifestyle whatsoever and so it was easy for me to just say like okay this is going to be this you know six-week program but I remember in college you know doing things where it was like all I'm going to eat for the next six weeks is like tuna and Mm -hmm. spinach Mm. and that would last like three days right so for me it wasn't really something that ever was a huge part of my life but the way that I looked at it as an outsider was like this is something that is so black and white and is just like it's like a, a layer of paint you put on top of your life. Mm-hmm. It doesn't affect anything else in your life. And I think the the biggest transformation for me has been the the realization that like you can't change one part of your life without the rest of your life changing as well. And that if you really want to com- like be to your point like a healthy make healthy choices, it's not just about only eating tuna for six weeks. It's about actually taking the lens and looking at your life holistically and saying, okay, what needs to change here? And what, you know, do I need to do day to day to make this long term versus like, what is the program I'm doing for the next six weeks? And so your so first level awareness, and, right? And, there, and, and it's much healthier now, right? And it's a different level of awareness and understanding yeah, of these I, things. But I think that I still get in the trap. And this is why I was saying like, I'm, you know, surprised that you were able to go through that without it, without internalizing it is that I still get in the trap where, you know, if I'm, you know, trying to lose these last 10 baby pounds of like, well, why don't I just eat tuna for six weeks? Mm-hmm. I don't know that'll fix the problem. And like, so there's still that part of my brain that tries to take over. It, every it, it's a process and it right. takes time. Yeah. Like you've, like I said, 10 years ago is very different than now. 10 years from now, it's going to be very different than it is today. As long as you continue to uh, try to grow along with it and examine it and talk about it. Look, uh, the, the podcasting is amazing therapy. I get to talk about my process all the time and it actually speeds the process up. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, with yourselves and relationships and things like exercise. Well, enjoy is a literal therapist. So like when we do podcasts, oh, like yeah. I might as well just be in therapy. It's great. Well, I mean, it's that's nice. Now, <laughs> I mean, it's I, free. I don't charge it's free. <laughs> I've been doing this for a very, very that's long time. That's why you know us so well. Huh? Exactly. Oh, great. I see, I I'm worried see, about your assessment. Paul Check already nailed us. Yeah. So yeah. I know you guys. We'll see very what well. you got. You yeah. don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I've been doing this for a very, very long time. And there were, uh, I mean, distinct steps along the way. And I can remember each time evolving, uh, and moving to the next level of my understanding. And it wasn't even that long ago where I finally was able to break the chains of I need to eat you know, protein every three hours and I have to lift the weights this particular way so I can look buffed or whatever. It wasn't even that long ago. I'm 38 years old. It's taken a long time. I think if you approach exercise with that understanding of growth, that growth-minded, I'm loving my body, I'm doing the things that are good for my body, it, it will continue to evolve. The problem, with that, the problem with that is the time. For people, and the time that it takes they want to, it to happen tomorrow. Yeah, the time that it takes to to go through these layers, and that's what I meant by when we talked earlier about, um, you know, I'll spend ten years with a client getting them to perfect a deadlift because there's so many layers 
to getting to even just to the mechanics of the body and the nutrition and the, the, well, the, I have the answer to that. The, the answer is this: um, enjoy the process along the way. I was just gonna say that because then what? Like you reach a goal. Like for me, if I whatever got to whatever percent body fat, well, then what? It doesn't really matter of the end goal. Like we're all kind of putting this end goal on fitness and it just goes along with everything else in life. It's not about the destination, it's the journey. So it's like, but we don't do, we don't do that with fitness. We think if we achieve this perfect physique or whatever it is that we're freaked out about with our health, then that's the end goal. Exactly. And let me, what's the, there's a term for it. There's a, a psychological term or condition where after you achieve a particular goal or pinnacle, there's that post event depression or lack of motivation i can't remember there's an actual term for it Mm -hmm. but you'll experience this if you're a competitive athlete or whatever you'll train for an event and you'll get so psyched and then you'll compete and then like afterwards it's like so hard Mm. to get motivated like you were before or whatever because everything was attached to that one goal so it's a very short-term strategy marathon runners get this all the time all the time i remember after the olympics they did like this huge Bit on all the Olympic athletes of like giving them, getting them therapists to be like, now that your entire life, mm-hmm. the thing well, that you your identity to, is completely yeah. right, tied exactly. To that. Yeah. See, I mean, and the people that are listening to the beast mode message are these competitive minds and these mm-hmm. these marathon runners, these personalities that feed into that. So that and that's another real big problem that I have with a lot of the class settings and the beast mode mentality is just that it's not that I don't see a place for all of that stuff. It's just the wrong people are actually doing it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know, and, and I, I think that's the that's the biggest issue I have with it. Well, you're putting yourself worth on the end goal which is totally totally bad thing to do for anything right. but like if you I don't know I just feel like if you're if you look at the journey and you're trying to enjoy the process and you're trying to be nice to yourself like that's kind of what we're going for and I think that's what we've learned along the way like 10 years ago if you're asking me like my 29 year old self um it was completely I was running because it was burning more calories it was mm-hmm. I was running because I wanted to get skinny and then if you want to take it a step further like when's the first time you were aware of your body as a male like let me stop that. Whoa. Are you <laughs> trying to set me up here? Or I, what? I remember the ex- I, I remember the exact date. No, nope. well, nineteen eighty. Nope. Oh, sorry. it was in not, a tent. No, nope. um, <laughs> not what I was talking about. <laughs> I saw things happen. <laughs> um, yeah. When you did you have any like insecure feeling of I'm not strong enough or I'm too skinny or I don't look like the other guys in my class like something like that? Uh, yeah, I was, I was aware of that. Yeah, from from day Mainly one. Mainly junior high. Now, I want to, and you know, I'll tell you what. Uh, the good thing about being in, in this in the industry, the professional industries for as long as we have, if, is we've seen certain trends develop. And I'll tell you something right now: like uh, me, both men and women are advertised uh, in a way that is not conducive to long term health and fitness. But women really are hammered mm-hmm. way more than men. And I'll tell you, it wasn't that long ago when I first became a trainer. Okay, in the big box gyms. They had a women's area. Oh yeah, colored machines that were colored a certain way. They were the, the pads on the machines were like uh, like a dark pink or purple, I think it was. They were the exact same fucking machines that were in the rest of the gym. Yeah. The difference was the pads were a different color and the weight stacks. That's all for marketing. It was all for marketing. Uh, women, the the term toned was created to advertise to women to get them to come into gyms because no woman wants to build muscle, right? So no, 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 you're not going to build. You're just going to tone. You're just going to tone your arms. Yeah. yeah. The lengthening and lean muscle and the mm-hmm. long look, mm-hmm. all marketing towards women. All women, shit that we said, by the way. Yeah. Just rage stroke. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it was all. And so what happens is, when what, number one, women are advertised to, just like men are about, you're, you know, for men, it's you're not strong enough. You're not manly enough. For women, it's you're not, you don't look good enough. You're not, you know, hot enough or whatever. But then on top of that, the information women get is so wrong. It's like, hey, you don't want to build, so do five million reps of this, you know, uh, this butt kickback, and use these these small pink dumbbells. Don't you dare touch the iron over there. And if you lift heavy, you're gonna grow a mustache and testicles. Like you don't (laughs) even want to. Don't even get near shit. Yeah. And it's the I mean, it's, they're awesome. It's but. not only wrong; it's the opposite. Like, yeah. if you as a trainer, once again, the people that could use it the most, yeah. okay, weren't doing it, and the ones that could doing it the most probably didn't need it, right? To need to do other shit like yoga and stretching and taking care I'll, of their body. I'll tell you what; nothing is more empowering. I've gotten, I've had this conversation with female clients more times than I can count. Nothing to them. They've told me I've never felt so empowered as when I can lift something heavy. Now, I don't necessarily think it's because they felt week before, but maybe it's because they felt like they shouldn't be super strong or able to do certain things. So all of a sudden now they're deadlifting 200 pounds off the floor and they're like, I've never felt so empowered. I didn't know I could be this way. And then of course the way they look, 
is amazing. Then they realize that, oh, I don't look like Sal over here. Well, this is something that CrossFit did very well. They did very well. We we think that they are for sure responsible for women lifting good good barbell movements in the gym. I think they are solely responsible. I don't know anybody else that got that message across yeah. better because like Sal said, bodybuilding has been trying to do it for less. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I know that. He just went through yeah. puberty. Sorry. Yeah. I am the young one. I am the young yeah. one in the group. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It just <laughs> randomly happens. So you guys. Bodybuilding. Bodybuilding has been trying to, to, to do that. No, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, Justin. Sorry. <laughs> is it the Brady Bunch 20, over here? Yeah, right. Number 20, one, 20 years. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where that came from. I just got from. my first pub. Oh! Did I get some water yeah. over here, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Speaking of your balls dropping. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. So uh, we failed, and we've all failed. And even as trainers, we failed, because I'll be the first to admit that um, I avoided squatting and deadlifting and teaching it because uh, I knew it was challenging. I, when As a trainer, I remember the first time going under squatting and being like, knowing it didn't look well, you know, and not feel it didn't feel well. So I even avoided it for many years and worked around it. And that mentality is horrible. And CrossFit was definitely, yeah. I feel really responsible for getting a better message out about that. It took some time for me to get used to the fact that I was going to build more muscle. But I think a lot of people think that if they start lifting any weight, especially women, that you're going to get bulky and you're going to look like a man or what have you. But like, And you're I, just going to wake up one morning and be like, oh, shit, I got bulky. Yeah. If only it was, if it was only that easy to right. build muscle. If oh. only. Thank yeah. you. I know. I talk to people and they're like, even to this day, you know, they'll, they'll, I'll tell them I do CrossFit and they're like, yeah, I've thought about it. I just don't want to get bulky. And I'm like, do I look bulky? <laughs> I, I would pay money to get bulky. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But like the marathon days, I just remember back in my 20s, like it was more the goal of yeah. running to get skinny. Mm. And then now it's like you can actually build muscle and you don't have to like I can probably squat um, for an hour and do like really intense squats and then feel just as sore the next day as if I ran a marathon. Mm. So you don't really need to pound the pavement for that long. Not but, only uh, not only that, but I think uh, I think soreness is a bad indicator. Yeah, yeah too, I remember right? you saying that. Yeah. yeah. And, and people like. You should actually feel good after your workout. Mm-hmm. You should feel energized. Invigorated. That's it. You should not leave your workout feeling like you're, you just, God, it was just killer and I can't move. And now, and so people, that was people my, connect that with a good workout. Well, that like was I, my experience when I went through CrossFit. So I went through it um, uh, when Justin and I both were working together that, uh, years ago. And mm-hmm. this, was, this was like when people were doing it out on the asphalt yeah, in front of the gym. We were doing it in 24 hour fitness. I, yeah, I saw Jason, <laughs> yeah, I saw like Jason Kalipa. And like their running shoes. Yeah, yeah, I saw Jason Kalipa, Neil Maddox, buddy of mine, like compete on, asf- complete, compete on asphalt. We compete on that ass. Before yeah. there was Literally. any any like official meets or anything going on. And I remember like finding out about it, doing it myself. And man, I was just afterwards, I was so beat. Now there's the side of me, the athlete inside of me that, that kept going because I, I like the competitive side of that. But really when I asked myself, like, is this the best way that I should take care of my body long term? And I just, I knew I couldn't do, it wasn't the, what was most conducive because I was working long hours and it just like, this is too much on my body. So I think that's, the message that we keep trying to get across with with uh, everybody. I think everybody, when we first came out, we came out so strong yeah. on CrossFit. I think there's a lot of great things that it, it, it's brought to the community. And I think people, like I have so much respect for people like Rob Wolf and Mike yeah. Bledsoe, what you girls are and, doing. Yeah, like, you girls. Yeah, I think there's yep. I think there's a lot of people that I just I, to me I feel like you just just accept it and be aware that there's it's new. Okay, it, it's very very new when you think of uh, think about a modality or a sport. We're so, just trying to channel that energy into a more positive direction. I think that's uh, and I really feel for that community to to really assess you know how how to improve and go forward and always be critical of what it's, you know what you're putting out there. It's a tough it's a it's a pivot. And I think they're doing it because in the beginning yeah, it feels like it. In the beginning it was glorified like uh, there was that unofficial mascot of that clown puking all over the place and you know they called him Uncle Rabdo or whatever and Pukey. Yeah, Pukey the clown and uh you know and people would brag about how they couldn't move and all these different things and it's been pivoting, right? There I think it's a difficult pivot but I think it's happening. I've seen it more. The people we've talked to uh, who are leaders in that world are talking about it in ways that where we're like, oh, shit, like this has already changed. It seems to be have changed quite a bit. Um, I know the commercial side of it, the sport side of it, which is why Adam keeps harping, uh, excuse me, harping on that it needs to be called sport. I think that's always going to be because it's great for TV and it's exciting and it is a cool sport. But the other side of it, I'm seeing now uh, a little bit of a change in how it should be approached. So this is what drew us to kettlebell sport um, is it was exactly that because kettlebell sport has a very similar kind of feel as far as the community, the way mm-hmm. the, the way the boxes are and they train and 
uh, you know, there, and I, it's reminds me spot on to, and it happened in this area too. Like there were Santa Cruz area for CrossFit is watching these communities grow with kettlebell. But what I love is that they recognize it as a sport and, and that's how they've started it from the get go. And so I feel like I can get behind it. And cause I know, and I, you better believe we'll have to answer this question in, you know, three, four years when kettlebell sport really explodes, like, oh, you guys don't like CrossFit, but you attach yourself to kettlebell. It's almost the same concept. It's this high intensity, lots of repetitions to fatigue. Mm-hmm. You know, it's okay. Well, it's a sport. And I think it's an awesome sport. Mm-hmm. I think, I think if CrossFit just put a sport after it, I think it would, I think that in itself would solve a lot of problems. You mentioned Maybe. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one more time. I, I know I keep, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse with <laughs> no, that one. No. I don't think that's a hard, I don't think it's a hard pivot right there. <laughs> that's like, you know, fucking change it. Just put us fucking put some different signs up that say sport. Super, afterwards. super easy. <laughs> Oh, well, it got there drilled go. in there. You know, yeah. it's in there. I'm now. sold now because yeah. as a trainer, I could, when my <laughs> yeah. clients ask me, should yeah. I go do CrossFit to get in shape? I can say, well, do, do you, you feel like sport? Like, yeah, yeah. Do you like the sport? You yeah. know what we're going to do? We're going to grab things that say sport and we're just going to yeah. put yeah, it on there. Yeah. Yeah. Just going to go around all the CrossFit. Oh my God. We'll, we'll solve the problem. Yeah. What are the, what's like the top questions you guys get from your community of like advice for fitness or whatever? You like know, something we, you hear all the time. We mm. get a lot of the typical, you know, how do I work this area better? How do I get stronger here? I want to lose uh, not this much anymore, body dude. fat. Yeah. We we will we we'll, we'll, crazy. We'll still get some of that, but then uh, you know our, our more hardcore fan. We'll get questions about our personal lives, which I think is hilarious, and we'll we, we like to answer that every once in a while because it's fun and funny. But uh, we're getting more and more questions on the harder questions in terms of like the more abstract stuff, like yeah. how do I get my spouse to you know exercise now and without mm-hmm. making them feel bad or. How do I, you know, I, I've I've gone the yo-yo dieting for so long. Like, how do I make this more of a lifestyle? Yeah, what's the transition intuitive eating look like? There are there are very difficult questions for us to answer. Yeah, so we get a lot more of that kind of stuff, which I'm happy because now people are asking the right questions. Well, I was going to say, my guess is that people, your audience has evolved to, to asking questions that are not so much mm-hmm. like, how do I lose 10 pounds or like yeah. whatever, which is a good sign because that's shown that you have influenced them. It's good and bad. Yeah. It's good and bad. This is something Taylor and I- into semantics. I well, feel like, exactly. All the time, this is something that, that Taylor and I were just talking about the other day. That we just had uh, Doctor um, Ruscio here, and he's a gut health specialist. Mm-hmm. Brilliant, just awesome to listen to someone talk about that, and also even more awesome to listen to someone at Sal's understanding of the gut ask a guy of that level questions because you just yeah. get the most awesome amount of information thrown at us. But I mean, but it's worked for me. There like, it's worked for me to. It's worked for me to digest that much. and disseminate that into my. How do that I? That was apply- a good gut flora pun. You, made. Mm-hmm. Oh, you okay. did. Ooh. How do I? How do I apply that to real life? And so we lose. I feel like a lot of people that are just coming on board. So this is a, a struggle that we have because mm-hmm. if we want to yeah, help evolve our like long term listeners that have enjoyed the progression and they're asking deeper, better questions. But if you're someone who slides in first time you ever heard Mind Pump, you tune on, and we're talking about getting in touch with your spirituality and. Like under, you're like, whoa! What did I just step into? I don't know if I'm ready for yeah. that yet. So that's a struggle we have right now of still keeping it very, very simple and basic, but then also giving what our audience that's been listening since the beginning is what they need. Yeah, I get that. I feel like we've, I don't know. I feel like the I we've had a similar kind of evolution. You know, started off with people saying like very kind of straightforward training based questions, and now getting more. You know, we went through the phase of like, how do I get my spouse to start CrossFit? And I think you know we've gotten gotten into a lot more mindset questions and a lot more um, kind of like specific to your life. And, you know, those questions, like you said, are so much harder to answer because the answer typically is, well, it varies. What does your life look like? And I, but I think that for us, it's kind of more like we, if someone were to come in in that episode and say, Hey, I really love this. And I resonate with this. That's the listener we want to keep on board versus if somebody comes in and kind of bounces back off of like, Whoa, Whoa, I still want to talk about how to lose 10 pounds. Like in our mind, like that person, you know, is it just at the start of their, of their journey. And we're, so much farther that it's like, okay, maybe the message is go back and listen to episode one. That's what we used to say. Yeah. Versus like, okay, let's kind of lowest. That's hard though. When you start. so this is the challenge that we had, right? Yeah. So this is also once again, why well, I mean, we made the 30 days well, of coaching well, because yeah. we knew that we're like, okay, we can't expect someone who just comes in now. And you don't want to alienate people by yeah. being like, screw you guys get out of here. If you can't, if you can't yeah, meet if us. Can't understand it. Yeah. Well, yeah. we also, I mean, well, we also have a very strong background in sales. You actually just gave me a really good and, idea. And, so and, I want to yeah. do. And I'll explain you why that's important. Um, good salespeople are effective communicators. Okay, and in order to communicate our message effectively, we have to we have to think of our message and how we deliver it. And sometimes, if we stay here, like Adam was saying, and someone comes on, they're like, "I just want to lose ten pounds," or "I just want to," 
you know, get a bigger bench press. And I'm talking about your relationship to food and love your body and, you know, learn how to meditate. They're not going to listen anymore. And we've lost somebody that we could touch. And I learned this. We learned this firsthand, all of us as personal trainers with clients. You know, I used to have, I used to take pride in this. I used to have these come to Jesus talks. I remember with my you said that. And then they would go away. And then someone, you're like, well, I lost them. I have like no contact now. I, I, I would have gone. Exactly. I'd have a client who'd be training me, you know, three days a week. And she or he would come to me and say, hey, Sal, my schedule really only allows once a week. And old Sal would be like, well, Blow it's not water. worth it. Get your butt in here. Make it a priority. This is what you need. And I'd do this whole like old motivational, you know, motivational asshole speech. And most of the time, they would leave and never come back. And my attitude was always like, well, then they weren't ready for it or whatever. Right, and then I started realizing that person, I didn't do them any, th- any better and they're not exercising now. Like once a week is way better and than nothing. arguably, they're probably the ones that need it the most, right? That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. So, uh, you know, that's, that's where, you know, what we say with our message, we have to make sure that people are kind of getting in and understanding real quick what's going on. It's challenging as fuck, but I love it. It it challenges us. It's part of why I think the growth over the last year or two is because that we're always thinking like that. Like how are we, as if someone's coming in and listening and we're so passionate about all the things the fitness industry has done wrong, how do we not just naturally get lumped there? So we're constantly struggling with that and with our message. Well, I feel like it's a responsibility of ours to disseminate like this information and bring these guests on that are very scientific and to be able to present that like in a us, way that's more you know, relatable. Very, very. <laughs> like, scientific. just like you guys. You guys are well, very see, smart. here's the deal. You have the academia world, right, that presents this hard facts and science. But then you have like you guys who you guys connect Mm-hmm. with your audience huge mm-hmm. so if you get you know you get some of that information and you don't need to know it all you should right. be able to connect your audience to, to, to deliver the message well that's what i was going to say mm-hmm. is like you guys clearly have this connection piece and i think that we always talk about podcasts now are like a dime a dozen i get a little annoyed because everyone and their dog is starting a podcast and i'm not trying to get on <laughs> my know. high horse but i feel like every, that's like the newest thing so we right. are it's const- the new fitness blog we're trying to stay ahead of like how podcast information can evolve because everyone right now you can pull up 50 podcasts of like how to meditate how to de-stress your life and it drives me crazy like if i see one of more of those i'm gonna (laughs) barf but like the so the information you can just completely spout off on a podcast no problem but with the biggest piece that we found it doesn't matter what you say it's the connection you have Mm -hmm. and so the relationship that you guys have and the evolving that you guys have done is what people connect to I think and it's the trust that you build with your audience the trust that like if they listen they're going to hear something that's valuable and that like you vet it right that you're not just going to be giving them then any, there's no anything agenda that comes behind down it. Pipe. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's our audience is so committed that way which we love We, it, we talk about it all the time like we never would have dreamed that we have a community that we have right now. Well, and you you also got to consider there's a small entertainment factor. Like you guys are on your podcast. You guys are talking. It's fun to listen to you guys. I hope it's more than small. (laughs) But people, people enjoy (laughs) listening. People enjoy listening because they also enjoy listening. And one of the things that we did uh, when we first started and we still do it uh, now is, you know, we open the episodes and you're walking into a conversation and many times it's us bullshitting and it's inappropriate and yeah. it's, uh, sometimes it's hilarious. Locker room, sexual stuff. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, I it's apologize. all, it's no holds barred. We've been called, a, you know, Howard Stern of fitness many times, but we have a lot of people that listen because they like the entertainment aspect yeah. of it. And then guess what happens after 10, 15, 20 episodes. They'll send us a message like, you know, I like to listen to you, you guys. You guys were total douchebags. You guys were funny. And then but, it came back. Yeah, but now I'm starting to exercise yeah. now and I'm starting to do, it's like, yes, yes, we're connecting with some people who may not have listened to this message before. So, mm-hmm. Well, it's like when I first started listening to you, it was the same thing. I'm like, I don't know if I can get on with these guys. Like, the, <laughs> like it's like bro but like there's something I just can't let go. I got like, to stay with them. Like there's something I like about them. And it's just that piece of like, you're kind of, you're catering to so many different people in your audience and um, and I, like, I'm glad I stuck with you guys cause you guys are hilarious, and but it was, yeah. And here we are. <laughs> but I mean, I think that's the piece too, is like, you're not trying to be, to sell anything. There's no agenda behind it. I mean, I feel, I feel like that's why people love us too. It's just like, we're not trying to preach anything. We're just being ourselves. We want to welcome people into our world. Which is hard mm-hmm. as fuck when you need mm-hmm. to make money. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Which is why it's we still struggle. both have full-time jobs. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, right. and you know what? Just Not enough people the, are sharing that shit. You know, the people that are giving really good messages out there, 
you know, just man, it's it's tough to make money in in the fitness health industry yeah. uh, without selling, selling bullshit. Your soul. Yeah, yeah, and we'll get folks who you know we're trying to schedule interviews with, and they're like, "Great, I got 11 a.m. open on Thursday," and we're like, "We both work nine to five. You're know, like, <laughs> this is not our job." And people are like, "Wait, really?" It's like, "Yeah, no, what? we just have all day to give you free shit, all right. kinds of information." Exactly. <laughs> I, I, like, I don't know told. where you think I'm earning money <laughs> off of this, but I'm not like one of those people who just gets paid to exist. <laughs> when do you guys meet to do your podcast? Anytime we have free time. Um, sometimes on Skype, typically it's like Monday or Tuesday nights. And then we spit after out after miles goes to after bed. miles goes to bed. Mm. And then we spit Damn, out. You guys are mad hustle. And then you don't even yeah. have like a set time always for. Wow. No. Wow. That's the weird thing about our schedules and our dynamic is we like, just, we'll just text each other and like, can you do tonight? Great. Yeah. Now Sunday you're consistent sure. though with what you release though, right? You Every guys, Thursday. Yeah. Every yeah. Thursday. You're consistent well, yeah. with that. For they over 200 episodes. Yeah. Now you guys, uh, can you guys just sit down and do a podcast? Oh yeah. Okay. That's the secret right there. Yeah. People have asked us, how the hell do you guys put out four hit, episodes? Yeah. yeah. They're like, how do you do four episodes a week? And like, we literally sit down and go. Yeah. 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 My husband all the time would be like, what'd you guys talk about today? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel so bad for when saying this that. Way, when that Katrina way. gets so mad Shit. at me when I come home and she's like, you just talk for a fucking three That's hours exactly, straight yes, and yeah. you can't give me That's five exactly minutes of what conversation. What you talk about? I'm like, <laughs> just listen to the goddamn yeah. thing. My husband doesn't listen at all. You listen to the show. You're going to find out tomorrow. Thank God. Thank God. What's the answer I gave you two years ago? It's the same answer. Like, I don't know. We talked about. Oh, I don't feel so bad anymore. Yeah, and see, then we see, text, honey. Yeah, and then we text <laughs> constantly throughout the day. And her husband's always like, "What do you guys possibly have to talk about on top All of day. podcasting?" And so we're like, really, a we lot kinda, of things. We joke that our podcast is basically just like putting a mic up to our just ongoing lifelong conversation. Yeah, which is helpful. Yeah, that's it. What 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 got you guys started into podcasting? Why'd you guys start? Um, I was listening to podcasts like way before they were popular. I was kind of like the OG grandma that was like just listening On to your the, computer. the five podcasts that were out there. And there was, oh, wow. Ben yeah. Greenfield was Yeah, uh, tell us who, ben, you, were, who were you listening yeah. to. Ben Greenfield, um, Rich Roll was out there. Uh, the Wadcast guys were like the first CrossFit S podcast. Barbell Shrugged was up. Um, and then there was like a, a bunch of running podcasts, which is really weird. These two guys, they still actually podcast, oh, I believe boring. two gomers. <laughs> um, and then like NPR. So there's a bunch of things. Um, and then there was a couple women's, uh, like two women podcasts, two women hosts. And, um, I just loved kind of the autobiographical nature that they had. So they are always talking about their lives. And so I knew what I liked to listen to. And I was like, man, there's just nothing really out there for women in CrossFit. And at the time I was like, really, really, I'm still am, but really, really into CrossFit. And so Claire and I worked out together at the same gym. We both wrote blogs at the time. And um, I just approached her one day. We weren't really even friends. We were more acquaintances and we're like, you want to start a podcast? And she asked me, do you listen to podcasts? I was like, I listen to car talk. Like, is that a podcast? Yeah. She's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you guys grow fast at first or was it we like... We still a, aren't growing fast. Um, it was just a consistent... It's just consistent. You know, I think... the Word first, of mouth. Right. And the first couple, I mean, months, year, we still just felt like it was like my mom and like my husband sometimes. And and it's still to this day is like interesting. To, you know, we had our 200th episode two weeks ago and we had a party and we brought, you know, about 100 people or so came in. It was like, oh my gosh. And people like flew in. Flew from in out from of town. like Canada. Yeah. And we were like wow, there are people out, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's, you know, you're sitting in, the, in your studio or for us, it's a spare bedroom. And, and it's, you know, because it is sort of, I mean, it's a, a it's priority in our life, yeah. but it's not like the focus of our life that sometimes it, we forget that it has grown to the point that it's at. And we're still definitely, you know, not one of the most popular podcasts out there, but we're still the only women in our space. You guys would and grow you guys five are, times faster right this moment. If we posted a before and after photo? No. Yeah. If you actually- If we posted your before and after. If you just started doing it twice, three times, and four times right. a week. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Hey, you gotta understand what you, what, you, what you just like, said. When would I do that? Like, well- Yeah, you, that's it, another conversation. It's that, it's that jump yeah, yeah, yeah. But that needs to be made. And I'll tell you right now, what you just said is exactly- Ooh, Here comes the pressure. Okay. Well, no, 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 no. Right. You just- Adam's you like, just gonna, yeah. Let's set some goals. Yeah. Well, no, you just said- you just said <laughs> what, a great motivator. What you're attracted to- Business wise, right? I mean, like podcast wise, like you want people, especially the generation coming up, the binge. Look how Netflix is. Yeah. You, you want to be able to get it and you want all of it as much as you possibly can. And that's what's going to share you and get you grow. You guys have what it, you guys have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah. I want yeah, more. Yeah. You we'll want, get emails of people being like, I course. just binged on all 200. Yeah. Come on. Of course. Like, yeah. Give us for, more. The and we always, for Mind Pump is yeah. seven days a week. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's uh, that's, that's nuts. You guys are crazy. Yeah, yeah but no but wads not. on my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I had to I had to go there. <laughs> Jesus, I mean you were expecting it from me. Just, but, I'm surprised yeah. it's taken this long. I, so, I mean, I had to warm up to you guys. Where have you been? Yeah. I know. But sorry. you know, at the same time, you guys have the ability to just sit down and podcast. Right. There you go. I mean, it may not be that hard 
to throw out, you know, to just double it to another another episode. <sighs> Yeah, yes. Now you're gonna get all these messages. I know. <laughs> I know. Whoops, it's sorry. good. Yeah. It's good. No, we love it. Hashtag we love this. more episodes. Please. And that's the thing is like at first we were like, well, Claire and I just I swear it's it was just a match made in heaven that we got to do this together because our schedules always line up. We've never missed a week. We missed one week actually for her wedding. Um and we constantly just say, Well, as long as it's fun and as long as we keep getting feedback that we should still do this, we're gonna keep doing it. And just when we have like a bad day or a bad week where we're like, should we keep doing this? We'll get some amazing email from someone. It's like, you changed my life or I was so depressed and I just listened to you to laugh and you got me through a really hard time. Or thank you for talking about postpartum depression. No one talks about this or you name it. And we're just like in tears, like, okay, we need to keep doing this. How was, how was it going through that while having a podcast, the postpartum? Was that, did that, was that therapeutic for you to be able to talk about it? I don't think I really talked about it until I was out out of it. And I, and it was, I think more because I didn't, you know, like, um, who is the talks about this? Is it Bernie Brown who talks about like, you can't talk about a traumatic experience until you're through it because it's just too raw. You're still figuring it out yourself. And it it makes people uncomfortable. Right. And I didn't, not, and I think there's, you know, there's a, a middle ground there. Like, it's there is something to, something to say about just raw emotion and saying like, hey, I'm in this right now mm-hmm. and like I want to share this with you guys. But when it's something as serious as like being suicidal, that's not something that I'm want to, you know, go through that journey with sure. thousands of other people. Yeah. And so, I think the first time I really talked about it was I don't even probably last summer. I don't even remember the first time I talked about it, but um, it it has been great in the sense that, you know, so I ended up in like an intensive therapy program. Like it wasn't something that I just got through on my own. It was like, you know, medication Mm. and all this stuff, but then coming out on the other side of it and talking about it has been in a way, like, you know, we have a lot of people who write to us and we talk about, we have had eating disorder experts on the, on the show several times. And we'll get people who say, you know, like, I never realized the extent of my eating disorder until I heard your episode. And now I'm going to go get help. And the same thing with postpartum depression, where people will say, I, I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know what to call it until I heard this. And, you know, they'll they'll say, like, it just is so helpful to know someone else is mm-hmm. out there with that. And I feel the exact same way. You know, having that feedback works exactly the same way the other side where I feel more normalized. And so in that way, it's really helped me let go of the guilt of postpartum depression and feel like, okay, this is not just a fluke that I went through. And, it, you know, just because I had a healthy pregnancy and a healthy baby and blah, 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 it's not – it doesn't say something about me as a person that I had to go through this because look at all these other people who have written to me and had the exact same story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize when you're going through a traumatic a traumatic experience that there's help that you get while you're in the tra- traumatic experience. Right. But when you come out of it, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, you had mentioned guilt or just the thoughts afterwards or even it don't not letting it become a you know post-traumatic stress issue itself where you continue to relive it. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually went through a, a, a divorce. A 50, I was married for 15 years and went through a divorce while we're doing the podcast. Mm-hmm. I found it extremely therapeutic to be able to talk about it um, because talking about it and knowing that people are listening actually made me hear myself a little differently. I think we're, sometimes when we're in something, we're not very aware of how we're behaving. Like if we're angry or irritable and we lash out at somebody, it's hard for us to see that, oh, I was acting like an asshole or whatever. But when I'm talking mm-hmm. on a microphone to people. Oh, yeah. Nothing like g- podcasting will accelerate social awareness. Dude. Oh, I mean, <laughs> and you know, I was, I was, it's like you're processing while I'm on air and it's helping me process. And luckily I'm a sharer. I like to talk about things anyway. So it was just. Right. It forces you to take a step back and look at it objectively. Oh, it, it was. It's. I mean, I tell you what, if it wasn't for this podcast, it would have been a lot. It was. It's always difficult, uh, but it would have been a lot, lot worse if I didn't have um, this outlet to be able to talk about those mm-hmm. things. So, what what are some of the more difficult? Have you guys ever gotten criticisms from fans? Where you get messages and they're like, "You suck." We talk about this. We've had this question a lot, and it's really funny because as of yet, knock on wood, we really haven't had a ton of criticism. Mm. Um, Which I think also goes to show you that we're still kind of small. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't think that, I, that. We used to say the same thing. Yeah. Yep. We used to say the same thing all the time and it's not we, that. We kept you looking for it. I just, yeah. that, that's, a, that's kudos to you for your message because you know what? The, the, those ones that grow the fastest like explode overnight and go viral because of a picture mm-hmm. or s- something they said. It's what, mainly controversial. They are. They're gonna, and it. then they're going to attract that type of person. The yeah. people that you're attracting are... Well, you know, I almost look at it as like, you know, there's that old kind of saying that you you don't sue a doctor that you like even if they mess up where it's kind of like people might hear something that we say and disagree with it or feel like it's you know it 
bust up against what they believe, but they know us and they know that we're coming from a place of good intent. Mm -hmm. And so since they have that trust, they don't feel, instead of feeling offended, they look at it as like, and we have had, I mean, around the election, we posted a couple of things that were, you know, I like, it was a world event. We had to react to it. We had to react. And we had some people who Oh, you guys aren't political? We like, like for like tiny. one social. Oh post boy! I may have, the third rail. Yeah. Oh my I gosh! May have like Snapchatted my nasty woman T-shirt or something. Oh. But, <laughs> and, but like, and so we had people who reached reach out to us in really respectful. Like, I was shocked how respectful people were. Of like, hey, just remember, there are some of your listeners who are happy, you know, about the election, and we just, you know, we're feeling a little alienated right now. And I was like, okay, great. That is so like, if you're gonna say something, that's the way to do it. Yeah. And. I think the only time, and we joke about this all the time, that we've had like a quote unquote negative time. review. Yeah. Well, one time with the guy, somebody was like, "All they did was talk about her baby." I'm like, "I had just had a baby. Like, I'm not gonna, res- <laughs> I'm not gonna." <laughs> to that. But, Sorry. but the other time, you some- bitch, selfish Your baby, bitch. Adam's macros. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And the other time, it was someone was like. There's no technical information on this podcast. It's just conversation. And we were like, that's a positive review, actually. Like, that's what we're going for. <laughs> we are but not was, the technical podcast. Yeah, for, it was yeah. one star. I was like, they don't talk about training at all. And we're like, yeah. <laughs> not our show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll go to Mind Pump. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. No, we enjoy um, I, I, We enjoy the feedback. We've had some negative reviews. We'd have, we had a few of them. Not a ton. But we've had a few of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had one early on that yeah, would, that, that right. one bothered me. <laughs> that's and, right. And, like, and it was tough, but... Only because of the way it was said. Like, they really fucking hit, man. Yeah. Like They were like, I like... It was just mean. Well, it wasn't it, even, like, it was constructive. Just it was literally yeah. like, this is how shitty it was. It was, I like Sal a lot because of this, this, and that. I like Justin a lot because this, this, and that. Yeah. Doug is a great producer. <laughs> God, Adam sucks. Blah, blah, blah. So it was like blah, blah, blah. it wasn't Adam. even like bad about the show. It was, it was like very yeah. directed. Personal well, and, then, and pretty and the, sure it was one the of the reasons they ga- so. the reasons they gave, and this is why it bothered me so much. Because at that moment, I, I was I was going through the, I was feeling very conflicted with uh, this character that I was kind of portraying on the show, and was it is it really all of me? Feeling like I need to exaggerate parts of me to create that dynamic between us. I struggled with that. And that was like my first, you know, feeling that someone made me really look at that and go like, Oh God, you know, yeah. the, that's not me. Like the part you hate most about me is the least about me. It's like me, you know? So that yeah. really, I struggled with that, but well, it was good. It was great for growth. And man. It was incredible. Oh yeah. no, stop though. But like, that's totally them projecting their shit onto you. Of course. You realize yeah. that. Of right? course. Yeah. That's why I, did, like, I don't As think- trainers, you guys probably get that all the time is like people projecting their shit onto you because mm-hmm. they're insecure about whatever, whatever. And yeah. Oh, all, all the time. Well, I, I'm interested in your assessment of us, by the way. <laughs> I know you have one. Oh, yes. I was yeah. kind of looking at me. <laughs> yeah. Be <Okay>. nice. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please be nice. No, I'm No, I, no like, don't actually. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Wait, She's like, far? yes. Okay, so from listening from the beginning, Justin, I feel like was super, super shy. And like, I know that you had a hard time like getting out of your shell. Um, my assessment is like, you've this really like a tarot card reading. I know my assessment <laughs> of you is I'll put my palms out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, I, but it's more of like, I know you guys as individuals, I'm not going to go into each individual one, but I feel like as individuals, you guys have grown together so much and it's cool to see this has happened with Claire and I is you have grown, your dynamic has grown and I feel like you guys have influenced each other so much right. in such mm-hmm. a positive way. Um, it's just really cool to see, but I mean, I, I can go into like, Total psycho babble, but I don't think your listeners want to hear that. Uh, oh, we actually yeah. do. We <laughs> we had a, a pretty crazy like energy reading with Paul Check. Just so no, you know, uh, what did he say? Oh yeah, wait, you'll well, say a bunch oh, of pretty that, impactful uh, stuff. Okay, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So you, it's fair game. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> I think they no. want to hear it, Joy. I know. We, we kind of do. Like, yeah. I'm just like, okay. So what I think she's like, I don't know how to lie. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you gotta put on the therapy hat. Well, like some of it goes like because I'm such a therapist at heart, it goes to like deeper stuff too. So I don't like out your business but i'm like oh absolutely out but, all no no, no but oh, like shit. i know that like you had a really hard upbringing so i'm like i always think about that and like mm. my heart goes out to you like i wish i want you at some point to share like more of that experience because i feel like a lot of people need to hear that oh, okay. of like what you went through um as a kid and, can i sh- can i share something yeah. with you on that point yeah so this is actually something that i i know which is hard you know that's something that you can't I don't just divulge without someone asking or, or diving into that. Like I, I'm an open book when it comes to that stuff, and I've all, I always have been. And I and and I know that like within my community before we did podcasting, I had affected a lot of people that way because a lot, I'm, tons of people have sto- that story. You know what I'm saying? My so 
don't discount that though. Well, I'm, no, I'm not. Dis- no, I'm not. Discount- I'm not discounting it. Because Therapize him. No, 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 no. I'm not at all. I'm not at all. I know. Is that a but, word? But there, uh, it's. I, mean, uh, I know that it's. Uh, and that's where I, I because I don't share it enough. I know that people don't know my full story. But once you do, and then you know how I handle it, and I share it, I know I need to do more of it. It's hard because I need these guys to ask it, or I need a guest to ask something like that. I don't want what I don't want to turn this into is the show about Adam and how Adam's growth and his journey. So. Why not? Yeah, because like because okay. that's not mind pump. Well, that's not mind. That's a flavor, and that's a part of mind pump. Yeah, but, but that's I mean, not our. All. It's the whole. This is not like let's let's hear Adam's story and where he came from completely. And do you not feel like that's important though to like building the trust? Mm, I don't know. Could be. Maybe. Yeah. I just think um, about it. Yeah. No. We're gonna ask you like crazy now. Yeah. yeah I know. Now you're gonna make yeah. it. I know. Now it's gonna be Adam's therapy <laughs> fucking mind pump real soon here. Well, no, I, and let me just let me just say this too because I feel I've wanted to say this to you since I like started listening and heard the. I don't know. Do you want to like say what happened to you as a kid? Like I know people know, but like, do you, do you want me to say it? Or? Well, you, yeah. No, actually, I would. I'd rather hear your perception of it because I know well, I've said it and shared it on the show okay. and I talked about it. I, I'd like to hear how. Well, you, no, I'm, and this is Joy's like HIPAA coming in of like she doesn't want to like I talk like about a people's stomach ache. I can't like. She's like so <laughs> like even with, like the even two with, worlds in my life don't don't collide. Like, even with like oh, stuff so. with me, she'll. I mean, we talk all yeah. the time. Like this is not just like her. This is like her therapist mind and like HIPAA yeah. mind being like, I don't want to like mm. expose I can't, I mean, your like stuff for you. I can't take this it. is like yeah. about, oh, I yeah. See. I yeah. See. Like you Got need it. to expose your own And stuff. it's not like getting too deep, but, but like you lost your father at a young age. So I feel like you could have done one of two things. You could have gone like batshit crazy and had like really difficult life, but you created an amazing life for yourself. And I know that you were um, like really straight edge and like you were, you kind of, in a way, I feel like that was your control, right? You took control and that's what you needed to do to like keep things together. And your mom had an abusive relationship, et cetera, et cetera. And like you trajected into this amazing person. And I just want to want you to hear like how profound that is that you don't, that doesn't happen every day when someone has that much trauma in their life. And I know that you look back and you're like, well, I did what I needed to do. I survived and I like made it work and whatever you had, supports around you but like that doesn't happen easily this is where the confidence comes from but this is also where the other side of that that confidence where i look sometimes to the first person when they first meet me as cocky or arrogant and so bragging about where i where i where i'm and and i I know i don't have to brag but even sharing in in too much on a on a platform like this could come off that way in a world where we're we're virtual and you, you see and perceive what you want to see because you see what my Instagram or this, and then you get on my show. And then I tell you like my story all the time, it can come off that way. And I've had feedback. Well, I think if it's genuine, I don't think it will. Well, and, th- and that's where it's, it has to be organic. It uh-huh. needs to be organic. And I, get I can't, that. I, I, I get I, that. You're never going to get me. And I, and I 100% respect what you're saying. And I agree with you. And I've thought about this for Katrina and Katrina, if you guys get a chance to meet her this weekend, She'll tell you this is a conversation we had behind closed doors many, many times is I would tell tell her that, man, I need the boys to talk more about the stuff I don't like to talk about because I know that more people will grow from watching me have to grow in front of all of you. And I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm down to do that. But there's a way to do that. and There's a way not to do that. And the way not to do that is to come off preaching about it or presenting. I know better than to do that. And it will naturally happen. And I like to. We're gonna I, ask you more now. I like, I like to meet and have relationships with people that underestimate me. I love that. I like that advantage, and I'm okay with that advantage. I don't need to. I don't need to feel. I, the old me, what used to tell my story all the time, because it was what I had a chip on my shoulder, and that's what motivated me. But I came full circle on that a long time ago. That I don't need that for myself. And I think if me. I could come off preaching like I, I'm it's self-serving because I need my ego to be fed and told how great I am and what a great story I have. I know that mm. I don't need to hear it from anyone else. And if I'm really going to help somebody, it'll organically happen. Somebody like you will ask me a question and we'll talk all day. We, I'm an open book. You can talk to me on, on air. <laughs> <laughs> but I think my point is because I, I don't want this to get like all serious. Um, <laughs> Too late. But it is. Is like, do you know how profound that is? Do you know how sure. like do you know how profound it is sure. to get to that point? No, I, do you really? I do, and okay. I know I know all the numbers then and I'm st- statistically how rare that is and where I fall and that. Okay, when I went in, you know what my you know but, my statistical challenge was heading into competing a, as a thirty year old man who's never competed at that level, built a physique, do it with no coach, and make it all the way to the pro. Do you know? I know that. 
that's what that's me, man. I feed right into that personality. That's and I I I went into that the same way I go into life, and I but I know how to turn that on and off, and that's. But I think, but I think my point is that you shouldn't feel like that's something that you're like bragging about. I think it's just like just acknowledge like that was fucking hard, and you like not many people can get to where you are now. Well, can you agree that there's a way to do that and there's a way not to do that, and sure. there's a fine line between the two? Yeah. Okay. So that's that's where I'm at constantly with that. Like I yeah. I think it is a cool I think the more and right now, so we just this last week we had a magazine interview us, another podcast interview us. We haven't done a lot of interviews where people come on our show and they ask our story. Most of what we share on Mind Pump is more about the things that you know, and we do share our, our stories individually, but it doesn't I I don't want to just like none of these guys want to take the whole show where it's about I mean Sal's got a fucking crazy story Justin's got a crazy story we all do and we and we feel like we give bits of that when it's when it's right and you know if the boys ask more because you said something like that I think I think I know how these guys are so self-aware the next time one of these times Sal will see the right opportunity when we're talking about something and he'll have me share and that's great feedback from you and I think everybody could hear learn from that but mm. that it's a fine line then from that and me talking about it and just putting it out there all the time because it is a great story and it's very motivating and a lot of people can learn from it and it's a piece of me and you learn more about me I get why it's good and why we should do more of it for sure I 100% agree with you okay <laughs> that I was the skinny I think that's kind of like where our messages definitely diverge because for us like that's the priority right is like mm. we want to get to know you as a person we want to know what drives you and we want that from our audience we want that from our guests like we want to know how did you get to where you are and for us that's what the missing piece is in fitness mm. and in and in health and in lifestyle is to learn like what drives you and then how can we how can we speak to that mm. and you know so for us like sitting here hearing you say like, that's not what mind pump is about. Like for, to me, in any situation where you're trying to build trust with your audience, it should be about that just from my perspective. And, you know, I think for us, it's like, that's kind of what we've built our brand, if you will, on is like being that open book unprompted to give other people the confidence to own their own stories as well. Because if people out there are, if they're waiting to kind of unearth their own story because they feel like, well, you know, I need to be asked. People people just m- must not be interested if they're not asking. Like, that means it's not valuable. For us, it's kind of like, you know, be upfront about it. Like, you know, stand there and shout, like, this is my story and this is who I am and this is where I am today. And, you know, I don't know. I think that that builds a lot of confidence and provides a lot of freedom yeah. for people. We do. We talk about, uh, I mean, it's not a subject. We don't, we don't shy away from really any subject. It's just if the conversation goes there. Oh, uh, if, we, if uh, I, I thought mean, it, if we I mean, all that's why you know, right? right? That's why you know about yeah. it because Adam's talked about it right. uh, on several episodes. So it's it's not um, it's not an area we shy away from. Uh, we don't. I mean, again, we talk about pretty much anything. It just depends on where you know the conversation is going to go. Well, and to the same point, yeah. like you're not going to come on our podcast and hear like you know how, any of the technical stuff, you know. And so it's just a different. And I'm this is not you know that sure. was not a criticism. It's just saying like I think no that that's, no you know, very much the difference in our messages. I think, I think it's incredible advice. Mm -hmm. I got a chance, an opportunity when we first started the podcast to, um, talk with the, um, the president of all the, uh, podcasts for Fox. Uh, my buddy Brendan, um, was connected to him, knows him and put us in contact. It was really cool. We were super small. We just started. So there was in my head. And of course, in my head, I was like hoping like I could build this relationship and maybe these guys would acquire us and we'd have all this funding and it'd be awesome. But in reality, like we were nowhere near that level for the, it'd be on their radar, but he did spend the time talking with me and giving me feedback on our show. And one of the things that he drove home to me was that the more of you guys and your story you can share, the the more people will, will want to listen and it will grow. And so we definitely try and do that a lot. It's, it's very much so in, uh, in the conversation. And I think if we all felt like we, we try, we, we try our best to, to listen to our audience and, what they're needing the most at that time. And if our message is getting a certain direction and they want, so we do our best to do that. I think, uh, I think you and I are connected. Yeah. So you feel like you want to hear more of my mm-hmm. story. And I like that. I have it like makes, a heart connection. It makes me, Adam. it makes me, feel, it makes me feel good inside. <laughs> yeah. So, you uh, you know, I, pre- I appreciate that, but we I, all, I, mean, I all- also, I'm, I'm definitely very, very business minded, number nine minded analytical. And I dive into all the different stuff and then what we talk about and how, how our audience responds and, you know, if I if I felt uh, these guys weren't asking it, I would tell Sal or I'd tell Justin and they would do it for sure. And I'm sure they will now a little bit because you've said that. 
I, I also want to know, like, this is something we talk about a lot on, on our podcast is you guys are all in relationships. So how do you balance your relationships with all this? But we also like to talk about marriage hacks or mm. relationship hacks. Mm. And like, for mine example, would, mine would be don't get married. <laughs> <laughs> to, we've heard Kat, that one before. Kat, Kat, Katrina's yeah. be so mad at me. Yeah, we've heard that one before. I'm just kidding, honey. Well, you guys been together like 10 years? Six years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Close yeah. enough. Yeah. So for example, <laughs> round up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> she would say seven though. Yeah. Cause I think we're at six and a half or oh. something like that. See, round up. <laughs> yeah, right. So I, I want to hear, I want to hear, these because I know you guys do these but like um for example when I come home from work I'm like super introverted so I've been doing the therapy all day and just like hearing people's stories or just dealing with people all day and I want to come home and I want my brain to completely shut off so as an introvert you really need to just like have silence and my husband works from home and so when he when I come home he's like oh my gosh he wants to talk to me so I like go hide in the bathroom and like that's our joke is like for me to like go hide in the bathroom so he doesn't bother me so I get like my ten minutes of uh, secret, like that's how I get away from silence. my kids. Yeah. So, so what? What was yours too? You oh, have like a bunch. S- of, we so have many. some really good ones with our husbands. But like, is there and the, like this, this is all out of love. This is not like because you're like trying my, to avoid yeah, them. Mine but are you all, have to like arrange yeah. things sometimes in relationships in to make it. Yeah. <laughs> mine are all around like how I ask questions. My husband like. Oh yeah. So what's the plan for this? As opposed to like, what the fuck is that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think of some other ones. I know that but... strategy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? So having been, I was married for 15 years, divorced, met someone that was absolutely amazing. And when you go through a process like divorce, especially a long relationship, I think you can either come out of it and not change, uh, which I think is a travesty, or you can look back and be like, okay, what did I do that contributed to that? And how can I change uh, those things. Was so that, there a part that you felt like you didn't, you never, well, was there ever, ever a time where you didn't feel like you were doing anything wrong? Um, in the, while I was in it, only because I was so focused on what the other person was doing wrong. Okay. That you don't look at what you could possibly be doing wrong. And it's usually, there's usually a piece on both sides. Not always. There's, there's relationships where one side is completely horrible and the other side's, you know, not at fault, fault at all. But one of the things that I... It's uh, rare, though. One of the things that I really objectively, looking back, really learned was that you can't expect the other person to be psychic. Like, I can't come home and expect that person to know that I want them to be this way or that I don't want to talk right now because I'm tired. I have to be able to communicate that. Um, And after I communicate it, then the ball is in their court and it's up to them then to treat me with a you know certain level of empathy or whatever. And what you find when you do that is people are much more empathetic than you think. But expecting them to know right away, you know, like I'm not in the mood for conversation or I'm mm-hmm. kind of irritable right now or I'm really stressed out, expecting them to know it and then when they don't, being angry that they don't know it, like yeah. that's just not fair. Oh yeah. And then you're like, we're not meant to be together. Yeah, you're just not you're fair. Like, yeah. You'd be shocked. Because you can't read my mind. Because you can't read my mind. Exactly. Yeah. You'd be shocked when you, you tell the person, I'm really stressed out right now. It's making me feel kind of irritable at just how empathetic they are to it and how uh, things work out better. And of course, on the flip side, if you don't say anything, you end up getting a, a major fight. Mm-hmm. And then you're angry because, oh, I can't, they, they know I'm stressed out, that they know that this is going on at work and what I'm dealing with and all these different things. Well, like half the things I see in couples therapy is the other person thinks that if, if you would only change, then it would make my life easier. Mm. It's like, that's not how it works. Yeah. No, yeah. not at all. <laughs> Um, the other thing for, for me was finding someone who had, uh, a similar, similar passions or similar, uh, interests. And, you know, I know the whole opposites attract, you know, uh, thing, and I don't know how true that that is, but when you can share something to, and you have to have your own things too, let me be clear. You do your own stuff too. It doesn't mean you do everything together, but it's great when you share something that you both have a passion for, whether it be hiking or for us, it's, you know, working out together. Uh, because now we can go do something that we enjoy, but also spend time together and grow with it. And so it's just, uh, it's like we're going on a date every day when we go work out. It's really cool. So that's one of my hacks. Who's next? <laughs> Justin. Yes, the married guys probably you see how, which should quiet. go in order. You see how much I like serious conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was over there napping. It's like, what an asshole, dude. Oh my God. He's pouring his heart out over Justin, here. Uh, totally. And you're over there fucking napping. Yeah, yeah. Wake, wake up. Uh, <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> No, as far as like my wife's relationship and mine, it's, I feel like I'm from like the 1950s or something. And that that's probably why I don't chime in all the time because, you know, there's struggles and there's, there's a lot more realness, uh, I feel with communicating, uh, divorce and the process and, you know, and like, I don't know, I just, a lot of times I guess I withhold 
some of my relationship with my wife on the show because it just feels like it, it feels well, like peanut us, butter and jelly. Tell us know? at least this, like 1950s I Love Lucy or like yeah. Honeymooners. No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, that's which, I guess that's yeah, a bad... Right? There's a few <laughs> ways we could go. Yeah, yeah, which, <laughs> I just mean that is like... Is she we, hilarious like I Love Lucy? That she, she's actually, very, she she's, is. She's very funny, but like... <laughs> super witty. Yeah, but but we're we're very much the same person, but but the way that we think is completely opposite. So she uses like... She's she's a nurse, and so she she's always... Is that left brain, Sal? Or a right brain. Uh, the analytical. Yeah, yeah the analytical side. Brain. Okay. Yeah. I think so, science is showing it's not. But anyway. I'm the other. Let's just put it that way. And, uh, <laughs> Whatever so, she is, you're very the Very creative. One. You know, I'm just talk out of my ass and um, try to make people laugh sometimes. And, um, you know, for her, everything has to be this protocol. Uh, like, I wash the dishes wrong. Uh, like, everything I do is wrong. And I just, you know, as far as, like, the, the order of things. And so, like, our, our friction a lot of times is based off of that because it's just like, oh, no, like, I'm not doing this good, so I'm not going to do it. And, yeah, that's a problem, you know, because yeah. now I'm not contributing. Right. And I'm not thinking of her and supporting her. And, you know, we get into this. This is, like, always the... It's a catch-22. Yeah, like, yeah. And then you feel tough. like, I can't do anything right. Yeah, I can't I, yeah. do anything right. But I, I just, like I really like want to contribute. Person. You know, I, like... And uh, <laughs> I'm always clean. Like, we have different ticks. Like, so the floors have to be, like, super clean. And I know that that's her thing. And so I'm always trying to help with that. But my thing is, like, the clutter like everywhere. Like I have to have it organized and I'm just like, God, it just drives me crazy. But, um, and you've got two small boys and we got two small boys that love to just destroy everything anyway. So I, I've had to like, I've had to calm down with, with the order, right? I want control. Like that's something I can control is like having my place look a certain way and having things in certain places. And, uh, so that's been a challenge for me to, you know, identify that and then try and communicate that to my wife. Like here's things that like, and these are all really small things. We've got into things with sex, you know, we've gotten to things after like she's been pregnant, like real struggles with that. Like, you know, like uh, her being on birth control and, and, you know, this is something that's like, you know, she doesn't have the same drive because, because of what she's on. And so we, we, we've, we've, we, you know, there's been like a lot of, of talk with like how we're going to like approach this and, and move forward. And it's been real, you know, on that end of it. So, um, but, you know, it's, 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 she's like the perfect fit for me. So it's hard for me to like, uh, I don't know, express some kind of like bullshit fight because it's just, for me, it's all just, we, we, we work on it. Like we go our separate ways. We come back, we work on it. And that's like our relationship. That's a dance. That's the relationship. Yeah. It's a dance. It's exactly how it goes. Anyway, it's like when you're both in, you're in, you're not going to be like, I don't know. I think that's totally normal. Like yeah. all that. And you see it as all normal and you're both committed to it. So it's like, all right, this is our bullshit. So everyone has it. Yeah. Now, does does being a therapist make you just super effective at arguing then with your husband? Oh, or? he hates <laughs> it. He hates it. We can't argue because. Like ninja powers. Yes. Hmm. He thinks everything I say is a play. So it's really funny. Like it's taken us some time to like get to a point where I'm like, I'm really not trying to use therapy tricks on you right now. So, yeah, he hates it because every time we, we talk, he's like, you're just trying to Jedi mind trick me. I know it. <laughs> that sounds like conversations Katrina and I have all the yeah. time. <laughs> so I, I'm lucky and blessed. I, I mean, I found a unicorn. It took me 30 years, but. Um, At Starbucks? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, one, awesome. yeah, one of those. Yeah. Uh, she is uh, unbelievably very, very special. And the, the biggest thing about her that I didn't think would ever exist was finding somebody who actually knows me better than I know myself. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I pride myself on being a very self-aware individual. So I didn't think that was possible. I didn't think it was possible that someone could truly understand me to the level that I understand myself to the point that she's the only person who I feel like can really call me on my bullshit. Cause she gets where I come from. She gets, uh, she gets me on another level that the, the level of growth that I've had just as a human being, by having a relationship with her for six years has been just, I mean, you talk about listening to our growth in the show. I mean, a big part of my evolution is also the relationship that I've had with her for the last six years, because mm -hmm. we, I will, we'll, we'll have dialogue like that, like we're having right now behind closed doors all the time. Mm -hmm. And she's constantly challenging my ego and making me think about it and look. And so having a woman that does that is like, it, 
and this is what when people say that cliche saying that you oh you want to find someone who makes you a better you like but how many people really truly find someone that makes them a better you in fact most relationships people talk about what a what a burden the other partner is or how much they have to carry or they're constantly nagging about something they're doing like i generally know that i come home that i would without her i'm i'm less of a man for sure because of her ability to help see into me better than anybody ever has yeah how long have you both been married Nine years. So you're nine and you're recent, right? Yeah. How how long have I been married? Three and a half years, maybe? Mm -hmm. Three and a half years? Yeah. So you're in the fun. No, you had a baby, so now it's getting hard. It's hard as hell. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Yeah, we just kind of dove right in. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we've been together, though, for seven and a half years. And uh, yeah, and we've been, I think, like, we kind of always, Joy and I always talk about this, like, the amount of life change that I've been through in the last four years is, like, we have moved every single year. Brandon's been in and out of school. I've changed jobs three times. I've gotten my master's. We've had a baby, moved again. Anyway, so we've kind of gone through the gauntlet. When I met Brandon, um, we were both raft guides in Moab and, you know, didn't own, didn't have a, a pot or pan to our names. And um, so it's just, you know, basically have become adults together, which has been really hard. <laughs> you know, if I could give you a life hack that... Um you know, because I know I said Katrina's a unicorn. One of the parts that makes her that is that, well, if we see something like some sort of a state change because of some like someone's mad, someone's overly excited, someone's not energy isn't level. Like we feel that amongst each other right away. And then we'll 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 put it on the table like, you know, what the fuck's your deal? You know, what's your deal? And let's let's <laughs> you say yeah. that exactly. Yeah. Like, literally, we <laughs> will. Yeah, we, we're, we're at that. Well, now six years. Hashtag. What's your deal, of bro? Course we got yeah. to that level. Right. You know, it didn't just overnight happen where you could talk to each other like that. Right. But we, we respect each other so much right. that if she stops me in my track to self-reflect, I'm probably not doing something right. Or there's something I can look deeper into. Mm-hmm. So we will do that. And then there's things that. You know, I'll call out on her and, and she'll do the same thing to me. And then together we'll we'll evaluate that. And it's it's really simple when there <clears throat> when there's communication that's there. Something that has created because uh, and we went through this like, you know, first few years. Of course, it's all awesome. It's all growth. That's for everybody. Right. And then there's a point where, you know, you get to know each other so well that the thing you have to be careful of of is almost like forgetting about all the things that you fell in love with that person for and the things that you were doing, the things you were into because life fucking happens. Kids happen, careers happen, like shit happens, right? So how do you stay connected? Something that has kept us connected on another level uh, than anything else was we began reading together and we just chose, and you could do anything. Like if you're a religious person, read, read whatever book you're reading. If you're somebody who just wants to read and learn together, we typically like to choose a new book together. We say, what's a topic that we want to learn about or no information about we agree on it we put it on audible and we make sure that minimum once a week that we do that so we stick it and what the dialogue that comes from making us be present and and it's it's i mean because what happens when you get a personality that like myself and you find a partner who actually you know can handle you she runs just as hard and fast as i do and we respect that of each other but we also respect how that could allow you to grow apart so we've had to put in things life or marriage type hacks to make sure that we stay grounded and connected to each other. And one of those that has been a game changer for us was for sure, you know, making that commitment to each other to do that. It's unbelievable what it's done on, as, on a growth level individually and as a partnership. So if I can give a piece of My gold. wife called that Sehelu. Which what? is um, <laughs> Avatar where they have the little oh God. thing and then they connect. You know? <laughs> oh, there you go. There yeah. it is. She, a- she did it. She said that I was dying. What are your hacks for dealing with one another? With each other, yeah. yeah. I was, you read my mind. I was actually gonna. Ask oh wow! <laughs> well, gonna, uh, yeah. Sal tells us tells us the best of it. No, I, well, okay. I find so, a nice quiet place. Yeah, <laughs> I. Uh, I'll tell you what's uh, drowned out the sound. <laughs> I'll tell you what's. It's difficult when you have uh, three leadership minded individuals uh, who are trying to work together. Because do you all consider yourselves like alpha personalities? Absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent. And I'm I'm not saying I can even consider myself that. <laughs> no, all the heads nodding. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking to no, our yes. our uh, resident um, alpha alpha omega introvert extrovert expert over here in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we we definitely are. And so under normal circumstances, I guess that would be very difficult, right? When you have a bunch of alphas trying to work together and uh, people would compete or whatever. I think. Um, you know, maybe if we were in our 20s, I, I don't know if it would have worked, but now uh, we all have a, a similar goal and we all also are self-aware enough 
to know when one of the other, you know, when one of us is better at something than we mm-hmm. are, and we're okay with that. We're okay with uh, someone taking the lead because we understand what the what the goal is. The other thing too is uh, there's very few people I trust, or at least I feel comfortable enough allowing to let me know when I'm being an idiot or when I'm doing something wrong or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I do that with them very easily. Very easily, I respect them, and it's okay for them to say that. And it's not easy to hear. Um, and I acknowledge that, but I also acknowledge it's yeah. coming from these guys, and I respect them. You know so the much. intention. Yeah, uh, you, you know, you know what we're all about, and you know, it's only going to make us better. So, yeah, it is tough at times uh, to get <laughs> to get feedback, you know, from guys that you totally trust and respect, and and you know, sometimes there's hard conversations we have to have uh, along those lines. But oh, 100%. It, it, it always sharpens us. So, yeah. you know, that's that's just part of the deal. It, the the good news is we're all very growth minded, so that's what keeps us working well together is that we're always trying to grow. Um, if we were all in here trying to compete, yeah. it would never work. We just had a situation, I think not even a week or two ago where Sal and I got into it back and forth and just, wah, 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 you know, each guy like yell, chihuahuas. yelling his point <laughs> and what is so awesome. And, it, and it's very similar to the dynamic that I have with Katrina as far as the communication piece is that as soon, not even, the, not even two hours later, you know, he's texting me right away. Like, you know, hey, I, just so you know, dude, I, I love when we get like that. It bring it brings the best of us out because I know you come from a good place and I come from a good place. It's about the business and it's not about each other's egos. And I love that you're that passionate about it. And I'm, I'm so glad that I've found somebody else who's like that. We'll share that. And then what? because we ultimately want what's best for the business. So I think it's so silly when people get so angry at each other when you're debating over something that is related to the business. It's just that, you know, it's not, a, not, I hope he's right. We go, if we go his direction, I hope he's right. If we go my direction, I bet his ass, he hopes I'm right. There's mm-hmm. not this, like, I hope he's wrong. So I can say I'm right. Fuck that. That's stupid. Like, and whatever can get us there quicker. Sometimes that type of dialogue where we're speaking real passionately about things where maybe we don't see eye to eye. Normally what comes out of that's magical and not being afraid to let that happen and then learn how to assess it after, after the dust settles. Mm-hmm. How how are your guys' uh, spouses with your podcast? <laughs> they're great. Yeah, they're really like, great. Do they listen? No. My husband does <laughs> sometimes. I was thinking, I was like, Scott Scott doesn't listen, no. Sometimes he'll listen to like he'll, probably our 200 episode, but... Yeah. yeah. No, my husband... And well, he was there when we recorded it. Why would he need to listen to it? But That's um, Yeah, my husband does, and he... But they're both so supportive. Like, Brandon, well, if we're doing an interview... um. Sometimes during the week, we'll just do it on Skype, even if it's just the two of us, just so that she lives about 20 minutes away from me. So, you know, if it's in the middle of the week, rather than driving down, we'll just do it on Skype. And so um, I, you know, work full time, my kids in daycare full time. And so my husband knows that that evening time with my son is really important to me. And so he'll, you know, go in and set up my computer and boot up Skype and get everything set up for me just so I can have that time to put miles to bed rather than, you know, having to say, okay, you know, you got this and I'm going to go do my thing. And, um, you know, he's just, yeah, he's incredibly supportive. He's, that's his personality type. They're like, he's in nursing school. He's just such a, you know, like caregiver type of guy. And just like, that's really where I think he um, feels a lot of value in himself is like, if I could describe Brandon with one word, it would be helper. And I come, I mean that in the most respectful way, not in a way of like him, you know, only existing. Like a honey do list. Yeah, it's no, not, not like at that, all. Yeah. It's like he at all times is looking for like, how can I help these people? How can I help someone where they're at? How can I, like before um, he went to nursing school, he was a mental health counselor for um, ki- um, in the eating disorder unit at Children's Hospital. And so he worked with teenage girls basically who were, you know, in these life crises. And I would have spent one minute in that unit and been like, y'all have problems. Mm -hmm. I am out of here. And he just thrived in it. And so like, he really just, yeah, is so such like a connector and a helper. Yeah. Mm. And my husband shows his support by buying me workout clothes and (laughs) custom Nike Metcons and equipment for the podcast. No, he's, he's the same. He just, he lets us do our thing. I think, you know, they, they embrace it, and there's times when obviously we have to, we have a lot going on, and our schedules are busy. But like they know how much we love it, and so yeah, they're supportive. You and you, you guys record at your like my your house. Yeah, I have like a little studio in the back room, spare bedroom. Spare bedroom. Is it the same? Is that the one you guys started in, and that's where? No, you're... we actually started on the floor in the other spare bedroom, and we just like put the microphone on a milk crate, and we sat on the ground, and we just recorded in this bedroom. And then we uh, upgraded to actual microphones and a mixer board. And then we (laughs) 
went to the other guest room. So it's really kind of funny. How <laughs> and, we on Joy's grandma's sewing table. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Are, yeah. Are, are you considering ever going full time into the podcast? That's the question. <laughs> I would say, we're going to have to have like Adam consult. Yeah, I was, no, I was going to ask you guys speech. if yeah. you're OK with like, let's just record it and you can decide if you don't want to air your shit. I, I respect that. But let's let, let's get into no, the business talk. I think we, we talk about that maybe every month or so we kind of, you know, visit that conversation. And I think to this day, it's been, Hey, are you ready to have a conversation? Like not quite ready yet. All right, let's just keep going. And so we, we always touch base about it. And, you know, before we started recording, we were talking about just objectively speaking, um, it would be very hard for me in the position that in my life right now to take that amount of risk. Mm. And, you know, with my husband in school and a new baby and we live above a garage that someone else owns, like we are just financially in already a very risky place. And so to take a financial risk like that would be very unwise in my mind. Not to say that, you know, at the end of the day, it wouldn't be worth it. But that's the question is like, what would we need to do to make that risk? How much do you struggle with that? A a lot. And I think, you know, the other thing for me is I never in a million years would have thought having no athletic background would have thought that I would find my identity in like the fitness industry. And so that also is part of like, do I want to make that who I am? And Mm. do I want to make that my career? Mm. I have a master's in environmental policy. Like my, you know, kind of whole thing has been like, I'm this outdoorsy girl. I want to like go save the world. I want to, you know, like save public lands. I want to save the environment. Do, am I ready to change like who I think I am at my core and not necessarily change it, but like, that's re- the most important question though. Re- yeah. What you're talking about right now is the most yeah. important but question. But you have because- a, you have a platform where you can reach so many different people and you have to ask yourself like, who's more influential mm-hmm. or which side of you would be more influential? The one working in you know, some job or, or, yeah. or where you're communicating these ideas and able to connect with people. Cause obviously you you guys have had a podcast for this long mm-hmm. and built an audience without trying to necessarily, but you have organic and it's grown organically. Um, you obviously have the ability to connect with people. So it's already there. The other thing too, is you already have a large audience mm-hmm. in reality. You have a full-time business if you want yeah. it's mm-hmm. right. It's already there. Yeah. The hard part's done and they want to support you in that. Well, and that there's a lot too. of demand. Yeah. I'll tell you something right now. There's huge demand already. <laughs> well, let me, let me, don't I, hide. Let me let me share you. Let me share something with you that mm. was very frustrating for me. Was that let it shower we, down? We waited. I, in my opinion, we waited longer than we should have to make that leap. Mm-hmm. And and I, but I understand because guess what? I'm not the married one. I don't have kids. I don't have as much of a financial responsibility as these guys do. So of course I'm the one who's most likely. Let's jump. You know, let's yeah. do yeah. this. So I understood that. I respected their decision. But the reason why I still think it haunts us is we waited till we were comfortable. Mm -hmm. And to me, the best of us have came out when we were faced in struggle. So I wanted to see that dynamic with I've never worked with so many brilliant like men on all levels, not just their intelligence level, like for for business, for health and fitness, for awareness. Good looking. (laughs) Right about that. And Funny, charismatic, and the the, the how moti- how nice motivating feet. they can be, and how powerful Athletic. they are, and how influential they are, and we, I feel like we didn't have to do that because we waited till we were comfortable. Yeah, and I think it would have brought the best out of us to have been put in the corner of guess what? We might not be able to pay the bills next month if we just if we don't turn this son of a bitch yeah. on now. And, that's the and make thing, it though, work. is like we. That's always the question. Exactly that scenario. We always ask ourselves: Do we want to have to be there? And the, you know, would that change what we love about the podcast? And I think that's the, that is really the root question is like, if we got to that point where we were backed in a corner and it was like, we have to monetize this or else, or we have to, you know, sell more programs or whatever it is. Otherwise we're out, we're out on the mm-hmm. streets. Do we, is that going to change what we love? And is that going to turn it into something that we, which is that well, we, very, having, very important. Question having, like, obviously having met you and listened to a few of your shows, I don't think you guys could be disingenuous if you tried number one. <laughs> so I don't think anything would change you guys. I think, if you did enter into that struggle, you'd probably communicate it on your podcast and even talk about it, mm-hmm. which is kind of what we do. Yeah. Believe me, uh, people appreciate it. But again, it's just because you're just being real. It's just more content. But I'm telling you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's true. It's how we whip yeah. them yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. You, We're a machine. You already, you already have uh, the audience. There's already a demand for something that you guys can offer is all I'm saying. You don't even have to think of, like right. literally you but have an audience who's waiting I, I, for you to put out, I don't know, a program on post-pregnancy exercise or a program on how we would do, you know, how to do CrossFit in your home or whatever you guys decide to do, there's already pent up demand there and it would just happen. It's already there. That's all I'm saying. It's not like you'd have to leave your job. Yeah, but I I understand that question because that question is, 
that's different. That that's yeah. what matters because easily you not easily, but with a lot of hard work. Right. And well, with, and that's and I think we recognize that is like yeah. we have like the opportunity is there, and you know that's why the question comes up as often as it does yeah. is because we recognize like we do have an incredibly supportive community who at the end of the day I truly believe if we were like hey guys I'm not going to make rent this month they would be like where do I send the check yeah, yeah. yeah. you know and <laughs> which is amazing and the yeah. fact that there are strangers out Go there who would do that for exists. us is unrealistic you know it's un. un believable yeah. and unrealistic, I guess. <laughs> but, um, it, it really comes down to the question of like, we have, we've kept doing this because we love it and because we, it's been what we want it to be. And we are so like wary of it turning into being about something other than just like, you know, the content that we want to well, create. Well, uh, you know what? Uh, let me tell you, let me tell you what was the big indicator for each one of us individually was at one point we all, I remember everyone saying that, I can't wait to get done with all the other work that we're doing in the day so we can get together and podcast. Yeah. And when that moment happened for all of us, it, then it was a no brainer. When each of us were saying, all I think about is what we're going to do and talk about when we get together. I can't wait to get done doing this bullshit that I have to do to pay the bills right now so yeah. I can talk about what I want to do. Well, and we always, I hope my boss never hears this, but we always are like texting like probably 50% of what I do at my job is for the podcast. I'm like <laughs> on there, like I have a standing desk and I like sit down in my cube so that I can like write our newsletter or, you know, whatever it is or, or update our website or whatnot and and uh yeah i mean it you, you might have to go full-time now like, I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome you just did it to yourself i know right <laughs> my boss actually recently started following us on instagram <laughs> and i was like oh no yeah she was like so not that i'm stalking you or anything but were you up at four o'clock this morning and i'm like oh no <laughs> <laughs> this is not good <laughs> this is not good i gotta stop snapping from my cube all the time <laughs> yeah so i guess when that when that question uh is fully answered for you i think then, then from there then you then uh I, we could share all day about some of the th strategies like i feel like the first step that doesn't cost that much more of your time wouldn't take that much more commitment and how we kind of transitioned it was we just went from doing two episodes a week to three and then to four and yeah. we just we would spend instead of spending one and a half hours together we were spending three to four hours and we'd record them all well and then i have um a like about a two or three, how long was I at that company? Two or three year background in content marketing. So all I did was like manage other people's content marketing businesses. So it's like these evergreen programs and these membership mm -hmm. programs. It's like that is such a short leap for us because I did that professionally for three years for other people. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> I know. Sounds like, oh crap. Yeah. Okay. We're going to have well, a talk saying, after this. You, you don't do this. Gonna, uh, yeah. yeah. Are you saying I'm you're going to take us under your wing if we... Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, you have skills. We need your support. We skills. I, got, I got the Infusion Soft certification. Oh, oh look at you. Yeah. You, and, just got, you and Doug are wow. going to hug. Doug almost jumped out yeah. of his chair right now. Yeah. If, if you weren't married, <laughs> I'd actually make Taylor marry you already. I would. Just for those reasons. We would do that. Just to finish the kingdom. Yeah. So we would do that. I would. Very fair and he's trade. a team player yeah. like that. Yeah. It's very fair. <laughs> Doug's awake. <laughs> so looking ahead, what is what's what do you what's in the future for you guys right now? <gasps> well, you gave us a lot to think about. I God know. damn it. Yeah. Episode two hundred three. I guess. Do. Yeah. I don't know. We really have just taken it episode by episode, and I think that's why it's remained kind of, you know, that slow trajectory, but also be you know been something that we've been able to kind of stick with. But I think. You know, they asked, we got asked this question at our 200th episode party. And for me, the answer is how do we connect with people, you know, to that, to that place of people sending us emails like, wow, you changed my life. And those moments are touch points that we, I can't ignore. And that really was what it comes back to for like, why do we do this? It's because even if we only get one email a year, or even if we have ever only gotten one email of someone saying, you opened my eyes to this, you changed my life, like then that's to me is worth it. And how can we continue to find people in that place and speak and like give them what they need? And whether that's more podcasts or whether that's programming or whether that's, you know, journaling or whatever it is, like, first of all, you know, how do we reach those people? And second of all, what do they want? And how do we give it, give that to them in like an organic, authentic way without, and I think that's really the question is like, how can we, if we were to go full time, how could we ensure that it would remain this authentic message that we've really over the years taken so much pride in cultivating? And like, I don't want, I wouldn't give that up. And so how can we like just continue Monetize. I don't think yeah. you, I don't think you would. I don't it's, think you would. It's like a band that has a really good first record and then like if they go off and they're like, everyone's like, produce more content and then they're like, we don't know what we're doing and then it's like shitty content. So it's like staying true to that, like that yeah. piece. You gotta go to India and take some LSD. Exactly. <laughs> you gotta do With it. my Bledsoe. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, we have, it wouldn't be the first time we've been propositioned by Mike to do hallucinogenic drugs. Uh, <laughs> heard stories, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's got a name Love for himself. Yeah, he does. <laughs> great guy, great guy. Oh, he's the best. Such a good guy. <laughs> but I think um, the, the connection piece is what we're always looking for. Yeah. And so if we were to, you know, I, I think about this all the time. It's like we, we have this connection to our audience and we have something that we could potentially grow. But like, I don't want to just be pumping out content and facts or, you know, just like we were talking before yeah. we hit record. It's like we want it to be really just a natural conversation. And I, I'm always looking at the future of the podcast world. So where it's going and, um, you know, from someone who's listened to podcasts before they really blew up in iTunes and wherever else. I want to stay ahead of the curve of I hate just the back and forth interviews that are out there. We won't really do interviews anymore unless it's someone that we have a relationship with because there's nothing more that I hate than like listening to the same person on 10 different podcasts being Mm -hmm. interviewed with the same bullshit that they say. No offense, but it's just like to anyone out there who's done 10 different podcasts, but it's like you regurgitate the same thing and then you're just listening to different podcasts with really just the same information. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's great and all, but it's just not unique. And so I think what we're constantly trying to do is just kind of stay true to our vision is like, we just want to be Joy and Claire. And that's... I shared that feeling. Mm -hmm. And when I started to look deeper into it, it also challenged us for a major, uh, major growth in the podcast because I thought our interviews sucked. We all thought our interviews sucked. And it was because it was a different chemistry. Mm-hmm. And so at first, I, you know, I blamed the guests and some of the guests were not the best. Let me tell you, we've had some guests. Oh, we get that. We've yeah. had the wrong people on yeah. our show before. We're really but we but got off a but interview. But that yeah. also, as I, I challenge myself now, I want to be the guy like who, and this is something we pride ourselves on, like those, because we have, we just had Justin Wren who did the whole circuit. We just had, um, who else we have, right? I think it was Rob who just did the circuit. We had them like when they were hitting, you know, five, six, seven really big podcasts like Joe Rogan and Fighter and the Kid and they were making their rounds. And for us, like we want, we challenge ourselves that when they're on our show, that it was the best interview they ever had about themselves. And what we find is, and I think you guys have the exact same strength, is the ability to ask the questions that nobody else would ask. Well, even they're afraid at, to go that deep, you know? Look at this, this this conversation, you know, the first half of this interview, if you, it was like very kind of surface. And then as soon as we started diving in, it was like, okay, now we're getting to the meat. And like, mm-hmm. I think, you know, we kind of sit here and, and it happens with any of the people that we interview. It takes them a little while to get warmed up, even if you're, both podcasters, like, you know, you got to kind of get build that trust. You got to build that rapport. You got to build that momentum. Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't know, it's interesting. Like, how can you do that in a way that is different and natural? And I mean, it's different for every single person you have in the podcast. Mm. Alcohol. Yeah. (laughs) You've mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. It helps warm everybody up. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks guys. (laughs) <laughs> Whoa, that's it? Oh my god! Uh, the anticipation. Wait, you, well, Justin needs to sing a song. I really oh, right, like, right, right. And Adam needs to chime in. Can and I just sing, feel like. Oh, you want me? Did you ever know? Oh my god, that's that exactly what I was gonna my say. My hero. Yeah. No, I, come on, show me. You're, you're everything, everything I, I wish I could be. I can, I can fly higher than an eagle. Yeah. Cause you are the wind beneath my wings. Oh my God. Woo! That's that. Oh, very so, good. So Powerful. Beautiful, beautiful Thank right now. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.